Are you guys ready? Is everybody else ready? Microphones are in place. Ready? Camera. Judy's not ready. Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is the uh, December 18th uh, meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Uh, Judy, would you call the roll since actually we didn't do that earlier? Sure. Wintrow. Here. Housh. Here. Sims. Here. McQueen. Here. Hempling. Here. Also present are Village Manager Patty Bates, Assistant Village Manager Melissa Dodd, Solicitor Chris Connard. Chief of Police Brian Carlson, and I think that covers it. Great. Um, so, are we going? To, are we going to have our, our festive council members show off their their festive <laughs> yes. outfits? Uh -oh. oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Consensus on who's, who's the best looking. <laughs> <laughs> Always Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we're starting off with uh, swearing in three new commission members for the Library Commission. If you three would come up to the front. You have your, can you, do you have enough light to read those? So just read your uh, the oath of office. Altogether? Yes. I solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and the state of Ohio, that I will, in all respects, observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yale Springs, and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of library commission. Great. Welcome. <laughs> Why don't, why don't you all introduce yourselves so everybody knows yes. who you are? Becky Rushman, Dorothy Smith, Lee Duncan. And Becky is returning. From how many years have you served already, Becky? Oh, so That's bad. great. Um, and we have two new members, which is great to have. Lee has also been on. Oh, you've been on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Dorothy is our new uh, our new representative, and we know she has great credentials because she actually worked on on the uh, records retention here for the village. Yeah. So that was quite a job in and of itself. So we appreciate you coming back and and doing even more. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, it, if you want, we don't need them. I mean, I don't Are know you that you need them. Can keep them as a souvenir. Yes, and I, <laughs> with my payment. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll I'll sign this here. Yeah. So Judy will take care of that. Um, what do we have next? Uh, next we have announcements. Brian. Uh, yes, so um, first of all, I wanted to uh, highlight that, you know, we have put a call out for um, the advisory committee for the active transportation planning process. Uh, we're looking for anyone interested to submit that interest by December 30th, and we're going to get started with that process mid-January. Um, I also wanted to show off this amazing plaque that uh, Patty received for 30 years uh -huh. of public service at the ICMA conference. Patty, awesome job. Keep up the good work. Um, and uh, also, I wanted to mention that, uh, uh, again, January 19th, we're going to be reopening the Bryan Center Gallery. Um, I think many of you have heard that the Yellow Springs Arts Council is going to be bringing back their permanent collection. And uh, this is going to be the first um, uh, 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 basically event to kick that off. And uh, we'll be in rooms A and B from 6 to 9 on the 19th. Um, also, uh, I wanted to highlight the uh, Little Art Theater is going to have their annual New Year's Eve celebration. Uh, and that is going to start at 8 o'clock. There are still tickets available. We've got our own Devil's Backbone with uh, Carl Schumacher that's going to be performing that night. And uh, the movie Mamma Mia is going to be showing. So it's going to be a very musical evening. And uh, I think that's all I've got. 
And if you're going to that, or even if you're not, um, after that, um, we're going to have our traditional uh, New Year's Eve celebration downtown, thanks to Chief um, Carlson and Chief Altman. Um, we'll have a very um, We'll have the streets closed. It will be quasi-official. It's not going to be heavy-handed. It's going to be just as fun as ever. Um, ball drop will happen. So please come down and enjoy that and uh, uh, be safe and be happy and celebrate. Yeah, and actually, I should add, um, we did uh, create a new part of the event, uh, which is uh, Mayor Fobert, on his last day as mayor, is going to swear in the new council members, mayor, and uh, also school board and township trustees. That's going to happen at the Little Art on New Year's Eve as well. Oh, nice. Inside the Little Art or out? Inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Everybody's welcome to come in. Okay. Um, and I also wanted to mention, since we, I think we only have one more meeting before that, um, that Martin Luther King Jr. Day is January 15th, and the celebration, the, the parade, I don't know if the parade's going to start, probably at the school. Starts at Subway. Starts at Subway. Starts okay, at Subway. well that's they always, changed, that's very festive. Yeah, they've changed, um, <laughs> they've changed the route this year and it starts at Subway. But the, the celebration, the ending celebration will be here in the gym. So um, just a little change, you've had to change the past couple of years. So um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And there is... If, if we celebrate, for those celebrating Christmas, there are a few more shopping days, so please shop local. Uh, Melissa? Oh, there is a uh, water main break um, in the area of Allen and Meadow. Um, so crews are out there and they are working on that now, so if, um, if residents uh, are having any discolored water, they're just asked to run their faucets until that runs clear, and as soon as we get the uh, text from uh, the crews, and once that's been repaired, we will let everybody know. And also, um, the new water plant um, is nearing completion. There is um, just one more approval from the EPA that we are waiting on, and once that happens, we will let everybody know um, that that is going online and um, any adjustments to water softeners that are in homes uh, that need to be made. So we will make sure that we will communicate everything along the way to all the residents. Great. Anyone else? Well, I, I know we've got resolutions on the docket, but um, as everybody knows, I think, it's uh, Karen and Jerry's last meeting, and um, uh, it's, uh, wow, it's, it's going to be a, an interesting uh, uh, meeting for all of us, I think. But, um, you know, I, I just want to say that I have been incredibly honored to work with these two uh, for uh, the last four years, and uh, it's going to be really hard to see them go. But I'm also excited to uh, have Kevin and Lisa coming on board, and um, we're going to continue the great work the council has done. And um, I'm sure we'll have more to say when those resolutions come up. Thanks. I, I, I would just like to say something too, because um, you know, people come up to me and they say, God, I'm glad I don't have your job of being on council. <laughs> you know, like, well. But truly, working with uh, the five of us, um, and in particular, I'll call out Karen and Jerry because they're leaving, has been such a pleasure. I mean, it's even nice to disagree, you know, because really, truly, because we don't take it personally, you know, and so. Uh, it, so when I asked Jerry, <laughs> when I asked Jerry if he would like to comment on what does he think about something, and he says no, he doesn't want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, you know, it's been really cool to work with Karen and Jerry, and uh, we'll all miss them. And just so everyone knows what, uh, how much uh, they have contributed to the village. Um, and this is our last council meeting of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like to also acknowledge all of the staff that work for the village. Um, someone also recently pointed out to me, you know, we're, we sit out in front uh, and we have some other staff uh, sitting down there that are, get to sit out in front too and get to be seen and mm -hmm. criticized or admired, whichever <laughs> happens to be. But we have 
how many staff do we have? Four, um, four, 48. 48 people who work f to keep this village running. And a lot of them probably, a lot of people have never even met. But if they weren't doing their job, like some of them are out right now fixing a water line, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we would we would not be very happy. So I would just like to extend appreciation also to all of the staff of the village and have a great uh, end of the year and a, and a good new year. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, one announcement I, I also want to make is that the there was the groundbreaking for Cresco uh, last Thursday morning. Um, it was quite the media circus. Um, hopefully you've all seen it either on TV or in, in the press. Um, there was a great article, in, well no, I guess there wasn't a great article. There was a great article on the <laughs> website, not in the news yet, since it was on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, but um, quite a momentous day and um, uh, the Cresco folks are, are very pleased. They were the first um, facility to break ground to make any movement on a new facility in Ohio. So we're incredibly proud of that. We, uh, the staff, talking about the staff, the staff threw together a, um, you know, getting getting the, the groundbreaking organized. If you haven't noticed, there's equipment. That site is now covered with equipment. So they are ready to start. So um, a very, very important uh, occasion and, and uh, time for the village. So I'm definitely happy to have been involved in that. Um, next item is the consent agenda. Um, all that we have this point are the minutes of the January 4th meeting. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, review of the agenda. Is there anything we need to add or move on the agenda? Lots of res lots of legislation, typical for end of the year. Anything? Would, okay. Would it be possible to move um, resolution 61? Before resolution 59, because it kind of casts a pall on the I know, I was going to say, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it came in late, so it had to get that number, but if we can move it before, that would be Sure, great. let's do that. Okay. Hmm. It, sound, it sounds so exciting. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, okay, it sounds good. Um, Brian, do you want to review the uh, petitions and communications? I do. Um, so we received a letter, it was actually the Sunday before our last meeting from uh, Donna and Al Denman uh, highlighting that uh, we should think more about um, diversity in our hiring practices. Uh, we also uh, received a letter from Judith Hempfling about uh, basically making sure that uh, new council members were orientated so that they uh, had more uh, interaction with current council members and we have responded to that. We're planning, and I think we'll mention this later, to have a uh, uh, an early council retreat. I th think we scheduled that for January 10th, 11th? 10th, I believe. 10th, yes. Um, uh, we also received a resignation letter from Cindy Powells um, from the Justice System Task Force. Uh, Alice Jacobs uh, highlighted some things about the uh, data analysis for the uh, report that we're going to look at later today. Um, Lisa Krieger submitted something about the uh, community outreach specialist and some uh, highlights about things we should consider, which we're going to also be talking about on our agenda. And I also submitted a couple documents about um, active transportation planning, just to help people understand a little bit more about the process that we're going to be going through in January. Okay, moving on to public hearings and legislation. Right. We have a second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 27, 2017-42. Here we go. And I'm assuming you want this by title only? Title only, please. This is repealing section 1040.01, Utility Dispute Resolution Board, Establishment Authority of the Codified Ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 1040.01, Utility Dispute Resolution Board, Establishment Authority. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Patty or Melissa? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this this resolution, or I'm sorry, this this is an ordinance, isn't it? Yes, this yes. ordinance is basically taking the uh, changing the makeup of the utility dispute resolution board, and it's actually putting it in line um, 
with uh, one of the uh, other boards that we have that deals with income tax um, or tax review. Um, so the way that this was made up before is this was made up of five people. It was three staff members and two citizens. And now uh, the makeup is going to be two uh, members appointed by council. And uh, those cannot be employees. And then there will be a third member that is appointed by the village manager that could be an employee. Um, it's just not allowed to be the finance director or somebody that is directly involved with um, the decision making process over utilities, which the finance director currently is. Um, so, and they are also going to serve a two-year term versus a uh, three-year term. So um, this is basically just changing the composition of that board. And does this, so this doesn't cover the tax appeals board, that's? No, um, it's basically putting the composition of this board in line with the tax appeals board so that the intention was that the same members would serve on both, but they needed to be the same makeup. Okay. So this is changing it to be in line with the uh, Tax Appeals Board. Okay. Any comments or questions from Council? Sounds this good. is uh, second reading. I'll open the public hearing for comment. Seeing and hearing none, uh, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Wintra? Yes. 2017-43. Um, do you want this just by title and then let Melissa by do By thing? title and, and let Melissa do the detailing and just to note this is an emergency um, piece of legislation so this will be the final reading. Okay. Yep. This is the 2017 Supplemental Appropriations and Declaring an Emergency, Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Uh, can I get a motion please? So moved. Second. Melissa. Okay, so this is the uh, final supplemental appropriation of the year. This, uh, what this basically does is this is the uh, this gives me the ability to look at where all of our expenditures were um, and be able to account um, for anything that was above and beyond and sometimes below um, what was what was originally appropriated um, at the beginning of the year. And I think we've done um, two other supplemental appropriations uh, at, during the year to account for different things. So. Um, if the ordinance format, um, I've got uh, a worksheet that accompanies it that gives more detail than what the ordinance actually does. Um, it, it is split out by the different funds and it actually tells you where the money is going and what it is specifically for. Um, so I'm going to go through the totals and then I will hit some highlights. Um, the general fund. Um, I am appropriating $408,812 in addition, um, and then I'll go through and I'll explain what some of those were. Um, with the special revenue funds, there's an additional $44,100 appropriated. And then the, uh, the next area are the capital project funds. There's an additional $428,625 appropriated. And then the final area are enterprise funds. There are an extra $561,076 appropriated, which brings the grand total supplemental appropriations with this ordinance to $1,442,613. And I know that that number seems big, and I am going to explain where those figures came from. Um, if, if council would re recall during the original budget process um, that we were going through for 2018, we had some additional money in the general fund um, that had come in as a result of increased income taxes as well as the sale of Sutton Farm. So what I did was, um, if you look at the transfers and advances line, there's 404,812 going out. Um, 400,000 of that is to go out and to be received into the uh, facilities improvement fund. Um, and that is going to be to support the uh, Sutton Farm um, crew quarters that is the, um, the bid was approved at the last meeting, I believe. Um, two meetings ago, um, and that amount was $284,625. Um, so that's also being appropriated in this ordinance under the Facilities Improvement Fund. Um, so that would leave an extra $116,000 um, worth of those additional revenues from the general fund to remain in the Facilities Improvement Fund to be earmarked towards future projects in addition to the Sutton Farm Crew Quarters. 
Um, and the other things in the general fund were just some very minor adjustments. Um, the extra $4,812 was going to be appropriated to the guaranteed deposits fund that we were uh, zeroing out since we no longer take deposits for utilities and that fund um, was coming up short at the end of the year. So the general fund, those are the highlights there. Um, there wasn't anything major in the um, special revenue funds. Um, the, the biggest appropriation was $42,000 um, in the parks and recreation fund and that was to basically cover some maintenance and some extra um, personnel cost at the end of the pool season that weren't anticipated because we're still trying to get our bearings in terms of how much it's costing us to run that on our own versus out of contract as we had been doing. Um, and then the capital project funds, uh, the last meeting uh, council approved the purchase of a line truck for the electric department. So the electric capital improvement fund is seeing that expenditure of $132,000 that was approved at the last meeting. And then the other large expenditure was that uh, Sutton Farm crew quarters there, 284625 And then the U.S. ACA grant fund, um, that, that work out at the uh, entrance to the CBE, that infrastructure work is done. Um, and there was $260,000 appropriated. And the total cost with everything was, uh, I believe, 272000 And all that money was there. Um, it just needed to be, um, that last little bit needed to be appropriated to cover those uh, final costs. Um, and then I do look for that money to be, I was hoping that that money was going to come back to the village by the end of the year. But um, I know that the Army Corps of Engineers, they need to do a site visit from Louisville and they should be here. Um, we've got them on the books to come next week to do the site visit and then hopefully close that out. So that was kind of a side note. And then the other large, um, the other large area are the enterprise funds. The biggest uh, there is uh, the electric fund, $364,000 and that's for power costs. Um, what you don't see on the other side of this is the increase that we had come in in revenues. Um, so all of our appropriations are approved by council. However, our, um, our estimated resources do not have to come before council. And so when I file this ordinance with the county tomorrow, I will also be filing um, an updated estimated resources, which is going to show the, I think it was an extra $275,000 worth of revenues on the electric fund side that come in to offset some of these extra expenditures for power costs. And then, um, Can I, uh, what it was yes. that simply because of the uh, hydro coming online? It, it could be. It could point to a number of different things. Um, I know that the majority of the hydro pro projects are now online, with the They're exception all. of one. Are, are they all are online? So power costs are just something that are very hard to account for in terms of um, expenditures. But we do have a power cost adjustment that's worked into our uh, <laughs> our um, rates. So if if, if it cost us more to get our power, that, that cost is passed along to the, um, the customer as well. So that's why our revenues, if our expenditures go up, our revenues go up as a result of that power cost adjustment. So council just doesn't see the other side of that outside of the budget process typically. And then the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Patty. I was just going to say I did find out just today that the last unit at Smithland came on, so all the hydros okay. are online today. Um, and then uh, the water fund, we had um, some additional cost and water treatment. The biggest one of those was our first um, payment to the water plant actually just came out, um, which we weren't necessarily anticipating. We thought that that was going to be 2018. Um, so that was an $89,000 payment. It was the interest-free loan, and that was OPWC money. Um, so I did have to account for that. And then some of the others were just uh, additional utility costs and some wage costs as well. So that's the bulk. Um, I know that that's a lot and that number is really big. Um, but a lot of that is um, just utilizing um, additional revenues that came in from the general fund. And then the other big one was the, um, the power costs with the electric and then some of those capital improvements at the end of the year. Comments or questions from council? Um, I'd like to make a motion to <clears throat> update the uh, the line that currently says human relations uh, to commissions. You know what? I 
I think it was there in the last ordinance and the one that I must have used as a supplemental just didn't carry mm. over, so I will make that adjustment. Okay. I apologize for the oversight. Second. Second. I seconded it. All those oh. in favor signify <laughs> by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, I'm not sure that would have happened that, no, by we, motion, but were we oh. doing the? No, no, we're just doing the. That was just he made a motion. Oh, uh, so. uh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, we always already have the motion. Anything else? Any other mm -hmm. specific questions council members have about the supplemental? Um, this is the second, well, it's first reading, but it's an emergency, um, so I will open the public hearing to comments or questions from citizens. Seeing and hearing none, we'll come back to council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Housh? Yes. Sims? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay. Um, 2017-44. Okay, this is an ordinance authorizing the annual transfer of funds and declaring an emergency. Can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. Uh, Melissa. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, actually, Judy, I don't know how the title got switched on this one, but it was approving fourth quarter transfers. You know um, what? Instead I of annual, it's, it's confusing because the next one is an annual, and this one is fourth quarter, and it, it was right on the agenda. That, then that's entirely my error, and I was correcting the wrong thing. So yeah, we're changing the title to approving fourth quarter transfers. Yep, okay. just, so it's, it, just so that that's Got it. clear. Yep, I'll change it. Um, so what this does is this ties in with the uh, ordinance that was just read. If you took a look at the line for the general fund, there were transfers out. Um, and this just outlines where that money was going to because this has to be an, a an action of council anytime you transfer money. So you'll see very clearly um, down towards the... Uh, second uh, third of the page here that there was 400,000 that's moved from the general fund to the facilities improvement fund and then there was $4,812 uh, to transfer to the guaranteed deposit fund which will zero out the money that needs to go out for all those deposits so that's very very easy ordinance there okay any comments or questions from council I'll open the public hearing for comments or questions from citizens seeing and hearing none Judy please call the roll Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. 2017-45? And this is authorizing the annual transfer of funds and declaring an emergency. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Melissa? Last one for me, I think. Okay, so this uh, ordinance is the... Um, ordinance that is authorizing the transfers for 2018 so this actually ties into the 2018 budget um, so anywhere where we were transferring money that was approved with that ordinance uh, for the 2018 budget is outlined very clearly here so we have um, a number of different um, transfers out from the general fund um, and that total for the general fund transfers is $930,932 we are moving money from the electric fund into the electric improvement fund as part of that budget. Um, that total is $50,000, as well as water fund uh, transfer from the water fund to the water improvement fund. And that total is also $50,000. And then the fourth, uh, fourth and final transfer is from the sewer fund to the sewer improvement fund. That amount is also $50,000. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions from council? I'll open the public hearing. Any comments or questions from citizens? Seeing and hearing none, Judy, please call the roll. Hempfling? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay, 2017-46. Um, we'll do this by title only also, but um, obviously there'll be a longer discussion. Okay, this is repealing section 242.01 composition classification of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 242.01 composition classification and declaring an emergency. Can I get a motion please? So move. Second. Okay, uh, Patty, are you taking this on to start? I can take it on to start, yes. Um, so this is the um, community outreach specialist for the police department that um, Chief and I have been working on with Kate Hamilton. Um, 
in conjunction through through the justice system task force it was um, a recommendation that came from the task force that we started working on um, council has discussed it a couple of times we've been working on the job description to kind of refine it a little bit um, and this is at the last meeting council did uh, approve and want to move forward with this so this is the um, actual legislation that creates this position and adds it into the structure of the village personnel. Okay. Um, we can answer okay. specific questions. I'm sorry, Judith. We can answer specific questions about the position and what it would entail right. if anyone has right. Those. Just just to explain the explain the um, process and the ordinance. Basically, that this position wasn't part of the ordinances. Um, chief or until the until a position is part of, of the village structure nobody can do can hire a that, new position so this essentially sets the table for that position to be able to be advertised mm -hmm. um, I think that that it certainly goes farther in um, the information that was provided by Chief Carlson with the job description and and more details related to how the position is going to be paid for um, are we going to go to Brian next? Mm -hmm. Chief, would you like to come up and... Uh... Well, I, I'm repeating my summary from last week, but I thought if you had questions after that, I'd be happy. Good evening. Good evening. In response to the request from Justice System Task Force um, and Council to create a comprehensive outreach program to our at-risk population, um, I've created, we've created the attached job description, and I thank you all for your help very much. Um, it's difficult for officers to provide the community with the demand for continual outreach services. The more uh, ability we have to spend time helping our at-risk population, including engaging them with area social services, the more positive the impact will be on the community as a whole. Understanding the concerns of the police department budget in addition to the need for providing continuing crisis intervention and conflict resolution, I believe that re replacing one of our available peace officer positions with this um, community outreach specialist will benefit the community and the department as a whole. We should consider this as a pilot program because it will be learning as we go, um, but the immediate benefit will be more community contact and officer assistance through a single source of direction created by the Guidelines Council has created and I've been tasked to facilitate. I'm excited about this potential uh, for this position within the department and the community and I'm happy to answer, happy to answer any questions you have. Council members, we have, uh, I, I know I, I wanted to and make Judith have both been yeah. working on this. Well, uh, what I wanted to say were two things. One, um, I very much support this position. Uh, I, I brought the, um, you know, just uh, the position that we had as of the last council meeting to the JSTF for input. Um, and I want to give uh, particular appreciation for Laura Curlis, who basically a lot of the language that we then brought to a meeting we had that Brian and I had with Patty and uh, Chief Carlson is her language. And she, I thought, did a really good job of sort of fleshing out a little further the job description. Um, and I think it's, uh, I think it's very good. And I'm really happy Chief is so committed to it. Uh, and. Uh, the other thing that Brian and I did was we did talk to the uh, one of the police social workers. Um, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, Mindy. Min Mindy, uh, friend of Kate Hamilton's, uh, on the phone. That was really interesting. Um, and I do think there's, uh, you know, I had had the impression that our position would be quite a bit different than theirs, but in fact, I think they're they've got a lot of similarities. And the good thing about that is the association and the folks in Illinois can be a real resource to the new person. Um, it's not that different a concept, actually, uh, was my impression anyway. Um, the other thing is, um, I was a little upset at the last council meeting that we were going to have an emergency piece of legislation that, you know, at the time I had said I didn't feel like it was quite ready. Um, and um, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. I know Karen's, you know, this is the last 
the council uh, meeting for Karen and Jerry and their big supporters of this. But I would like us to, I would like to, uh, I would like to make a motion that we make this just a regular piece of legislation. That means there'll be a second reading in January. Our citizens will have an opportunity to see this uh, more fleshed out version of the position and our new council members could sign in on it. Um, it, it just concerned me a bit of how we were using emergency legislation and, um, and so that's the reason. I, we've had several pieces tonight. I think it's something um, we may need to look at because the point of two readings of ordinances is that this, the community has an opportunity to weigh in and it has to do with transparency of our work. And so um, I guess maybe now I'll just make a motion that we just make this regular piece of legislation rather than uh, an emergency piece of legislation, which means the second reading would happen January 3rd. Oh, second. Uh, January 2nd. And oh, second. I, well, you. I'll second the motion and then I guess we okay. can discuss I, I mean, I guess I, I really wonder, we're not, we're not talking about the job description. We are talking about adding the words community outreach specialist to the to the the ordinance so we're not even we're not even saying if and if you so if you all want to talk about um, if you all want to talk about whether this job description works I guess you can but all that we're doing is adding three words to um, we're, we're adding a job to uh, to the ordinance um, and, and to the positions of the police department. I don't see where that requires a lot of community input or whether that, where, why that, we're trying to get it done before the end of the year so Chief can begin the advertising process. He can't even begin to advertise until this becomes a position. I, I fail to see why um, this is a two reading situation. And, and when you've got legislation, you know, you made the, you comment about the other emergency legislation. Melissa doesn't know until the end of the year when, what bill she's going to have to pay. There is no way to have the supplement, the final supplemental appro appropriation be anything but an emergency ordinance. So I don't want there to be implications that somehow we've got this rush of legislation at our last meeting of the year that we actually do need to get things cleared up and it's the only meeting we can do it at. So, so which are we voting on now? We're voting on just saying that, they're, that we're going to add an outreach specialist. No, but I mean, Judith made a motion and then Brian seconded it, so. Well, we're, yeah, we're that, we're, I guess we're voting on whether we're going to do that. We're going to um, extend it or just do it as a single reading. Okay. After we discuss it, though. So, right. right. I don't know if there's any input from community members. Well, I, before that, you know, and I also look at this the same way because it does give the opportunity uh, for changes to the uh, job description. But it's basically uh, putting that uh, position as being part of the rest of the positions that we have here in the, in the village. And, and, and I feel that, you know, there will be a lot of opportunity for the new council to look at and come to agreement on what the job description is going to be uh, before it's supposed to I have to agree with, with Karen. We need to, to get it on the books that there is that position. I, I mean, I would also say I, I am not sure at this point um, why why council would need to... Why don't we just vote? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Okay. Let's, let's be clear. We're voting on the motion that Judith... Yes. Made. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going back to, to that we are going to read it as an emergency. What we just decided is that we are going to do one reading, we're going to declare it an emergency, and what we're doing is adding the position to, um, to the village organizational chart. Um, any comments, discussion about that? Um, well, I, I support this, but I, and I also wanted to say that 
whomever worked on uh, uh, tightening up the job description, which I understand we're not voting on the job description, but I appreciate the work that whoever did. I, I think that it made it a stronger, um, stronger job position statement, and it did uh, address a concern that uh, Lisa had mentioned about uh, the a degree requirement. Yeah, and I also want to reiterate, I, I really thought the, uh, the discussion with the police social worker was very enlightening. And, um, and I think we've all said from you know, the get-go that we are you know, really excited about this position. And, uh, and uh, she reiterated just what a, uh, what a game changer this was going to be. Um, really, Illinois is the only state that has this concept of a police social worker. So, uh, so it's pretty important that Yellow Springs is doing this. And I would like to say, uh, you know, I think we're, we're all sitting here. The, the last meeting was, was a little, um, there was disagreement at the last meeting. It appears that there's been a lot of research, there's been a lot of work done on this. Uh, Brian and, and Judith have had the opportunity to talk to the social worker. Chief has been incredibly patient working, and Patty working with um, the JSTF, working with council members individually. Um, it appears that we are now looking at a, um, at a job description that at least the five of us sitting here approve of. So I realize we aren't really voting on this, but I would like to give chief license to go with this job description so that he can get this advertised and he doesn't have to wait until January 2nd where there may be changes again to what he's thought he was going to do. I, I, I'm uncomfortable with us sitting here act, you know, saying that this, that this job description that we all have agreed to is potentially up for more debate. Um, just because two new people are sitting here. Well, and I would like to say too, Karen, that Brian has pointed out um, when, he, when he talks about this position that we expect it to evolve. Right. We expect it to change a little bit as we get into this and, and this person comes on board and, and begins the work and, and this position, it is a new position and it will evolve a little bit and there will be some work to be done in changing the description as we go. Um, and so uh, I just want to make it clear that I don't think either Brian or myself thinks that every single detail of this job description is set in stone. That's, you know, we understand that there are going to be some changes made, but we can't really make those changes until we get someone out in the field doing this and, and understand the, the nuances that are going to be needed to actually be the positive influence in the community that we want it to be. It, you know, I don't want to belabor that because I do know that that is not really what we're sitting here deciding, but that is my strong um, hope that we, um, that council gives Brian the ability to, to hire the person. When it comes down to it, it's that person that is going to determine how successful this role is. This is a very individual, it's going to be a very individualized thing. It's, and and I, I really trust Brian. I think he knows what this, the kind of person this community would support and is looking for and is needed here in this community. So um, I would personally like to give him the, my vote of confidence that I trust that he will hire, do a good hire, that he will follow through, he will do what needs to be done, and council will be on, will follow through as they need to, to make sure that, that the position functions as it needs to. So I, I hope that there isn't a lot of continued belaboring of this well, position. Do we, are you suggesting we need to pass a resolution or what? I, I don't know, I don't know if there is a next step. Chris, is there a step? Well, okay. The, the, It seems to me that, that where we are is, is similar to the taser policy, where the, the council is indicating that they would want input in public discussion as to the, how the position is going to evolve. Um, and so I think that you could put a, a resolution forward that just indicates that uh, changes in the job, job description will be have, allow for input from council. But I would think that a motion would be. Yeah, a motion would be fine too. <coughs> A motion to I what to allow to, to accept the job to accept description. Accept the job description as it stands now to allow 
the chief to uh, publicize the job opening? Yes, but I think that there's another piece of that too, which is that this is a pilot program which recognizes that there may be a need to change the job description. That, as there is a, that this is a pilot program mm -hmm. and that the job description may change as the person gets hired and as the position evolves. And that you would, and the motion then would be to have the chief make a report to discuss and the, the <laughs> program. I mean, that's yeah. really what it comes down to. He, he can make continued reports right. in his updates to council. Yes. Uh, okay, well, I, I'm, I, I will make a motion that council approve the job description for the outreach coordinator as currently proposed uh, so that the chief may advertise the position with the understanding that this is a pilot program and that the job description will evolve as the person is hired and begins to work and that the chief of police will be making regular reports on how that position is functioning and any changes that are occurring within that position. Second. Okay, and so we're allowed to discuss. I mean, I do just want to highlight, you know, I think my understanding what, what Judith is, is talking about here is just this is really the first time we've seen this job description in this form. Um, so uh, I'm probably going to vote in support of this motion, but you know I do want to say that you know the point here is really that uh, it took us a while to get it together, and you know this is the first time we've seen it all. Um, I'm very happy with where we're at, but uh, you know, I think you know. The point that Judith is raising is an appropriate one. So, okay, um, are we ready to take a vote? Any, any? Wait, is this an ordinance? Yeah, it is an ordinance. No, you, you, you already we voted on that. We already voted. Okay, so we're voting now we on. We have okay. somebody that wants to say something. Oh, um, we have citizen Lisa. Well, you first. You were going to vote on the motion. I. Are you waiting to vote on the motion <laughs> to allow? The well, we second it, right? Yeah. yeah, and so we're having discussion now okay, about. Gotcha. Okay, Lisa. Thank you. Um, I just have an, an encouragement for council as a community member around the use of the word pilot. Um, I really uh, appreciate, um, Patty, what you said about the program evolving and the position evolving. Um, as a person who's worked as an employee for new positions uh, that have been both called pilot and also just called new positions, um, what I've seen is that when programs are called pilot, it um, comes forward with a, a lack of confidence or like when things get a little rough the first time they're like, well, that was a pilot. It didn't work. We're going to go on rather than to say this is a new position that will change over time because it's a new position to meet the name means of the community. So I would really uh, make an encouragement that, that the word pilot isn't one that's used when talking about the position. I I think thank that's, you. Thank you, Lisa. I think that's very well said. Thanks. Kevin? Uh, thank you, and I would certainly second what Would Lisa's, you state your I, name? Hi. <laughs> I'm Kevin Stokes. Sorry, Lisa. A mere community yeah. member. Um, yeah. But I would second uh, what Lisa just said. Um, I actually, uh, as an employee of Antioch, I just took on a new person from another department, and we have a hard 30-day uh, evaluation period from the time she starts reporting to my department. Um, and, and it is a new position. I actually combined two positions, uh, so myself and the person uh, who's director of the department that she's permanently assigned to will meet after 30 days um, and do some more fleshing out. Uh, so I think that's probably something else we can consider. Uh, I know we've already talked about uh, the phrase probably regular reports. I think we ought to have a hard either 30, 60, or 90 day um, evaluation period where, again, not a pilot, but this new position, and there's really nothing that grand about a new position. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think we're overthinking it uh, just a bit. But there's a new position, and you'll have a, 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 a hard, again, uh, evaluation period. And, and we just go from there. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Uh, Patty, could you speak to? Mm -hmm. OK, Dave. Oh, sure. sorry, I interrupted your stretch. Go ahead. My <laughs> wife does it all the time. David Turner, this is a dead horse. <laughs> It's not breathing. 
pilot exploratory, whatever you want, you know, probationary, pick a word or a phrase. All of the job descriptions that we've seen in the Justice System Task Force and this one are really saying the same thing. There are a lot of specific but vague social work kind of things. No offense to anybody who writes these things, but and I'm reading through it and saying, we'll update and provide information about this long list of things. And whatever they choose in the long list of things is going to be what they choose and that's what the job will be. So. You guys could come up with 20 more descriptions and they're all going to be the same. And at our last task force meeting, we agreed on the text that we had. And now there's a different one that's got more words in it. And it's saying the same thing. So you guys need to uh, defecate or get off the pot. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. All right, well, I, I am going to interject on that. I, I think this job description <laughs> is very different in that it highlights uh, target groups that we're looking at, and it's a lot more specific. So I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I think that this has really fleshed it out in a way that makes it uh, a, a lot clearer what we want out of this position. And so, uh, so I, I don't think that the former description did that. OK, thanks. Patty, could you discuss probationary periods? Uh, yes, every uh, position in the village uh, with a new hire, whether the position is new or simply the person is new, has a six-month probationary period um, at least. So um, this position will be evaluated at the end of the six months, and the person in that position will be evaluated at the end of the six months um, as to be whether to be released from probation. So um, every position in the village has that. It's standard. Okay. And I think, you know, Chief, it sounds like Chief will be reporting more frequent, would be reporting more frequently than that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And certainly, as a new position, it will be evaluated um, on a regular basis because how else is it going to happen um, right. to get it get, just to get it off the ground? So, okay, so I'm trying to. So we're now in the position where we're going to vote, do a voice vote on whether we're going to um, Marianne's motion, the resolution or, or motion, just a motion about and, and minus the pilot word. Yes. Thank Did you, you get that, Judy? Just oh, take out the word pilot. Got it word for word. Okay, without the word pilot. Though. Without the word pilot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have video recording. Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thank you. Um, did we actually vote on? I don't think we voted on the ordinance no, yet. Did, did we? Not. No, no. Did not. Okay. We'll figure all this other stuff out first. And you do, yeah, you do need to open the public right. hearing on the So I will ordinance. open the public hearing on the ordinance 2017-46, which is adding the position, <laughs> simply adding the position to the um, organizational chart. Um, any public comment? Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy, please call uh, the be, poll. Before you, oh, do, sorry, before you do that, I, I, I don't object to adding the position. Uh, Again, I'm going to voice my concern that, uh, for the funding that the chief is willing to, to give up a, a position. And, and, and I think that, you know, council, the new council needs to, to look at how we're going to fund that position in, in, the, in the future. Uh, and, and my concern is always for the safety of our, our uh, officers. Uh, on, a, on a daily basis in, in, in cutting cutting the position to me f from our department uh, is more to me of a safety concern ver versus a budgetary concern. Uh, the community wants the outreach, but they also, I feel, uh, want to look out f for the safety of the folks that are protecting us. So. I just urge the, the, the new council to uh, scrub the, the whole budget and, and come up with a way to, to fund this activity, but also not take that option away from the, the chief to hire another officer if he sees, sees fit. So. Chief, could you address current staffing? Because I just want to make sure, clear to the community that we're not losing an officer. Correct. Um, this is basically filling that void or position from our task force entry. Um, we're currently down three positions 
Um, in fact, Saturday we tested for two full-time positions. We had nine qualified applicants. It was a good day. Wow, that's um, great. And Jerry, I, I feel the same way. Um, I also feel that I believe good police officers, we are social workers. That's what we do. Um, the majority of our work is assisting those in need. Um, in Yellow Springs, a small percentage of the majority of our work is criminal. Um, as I've mentioned before, a large percentage of our training is criminal and a small percent is in social work. I see this as helping to balance the scales a little bit in what we do. We haven't had that position filled in quite some time. With the addition of the two full-time officers, we'll be able to be at the staffing level that myself and uh, Sergeant Knapp and Watson feel comfortable with. Great, thank you. Okay, um, I did open the public hearing. Okay, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Housh. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Sims. Yes. Hempsley. I'm abstaining because of the emergency nature of the legislation only. Wintrow. Yes. Um, next we've got ordinance 2017-47 again as an, and as an emergency just by title only Judy. Okay this is repealing appendix A fee schedule of part 12 planning and zoning code title 4 zoning of the, of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs Ohio and enacting new section appendix A fee schedule and declaring an emergency. Thank you can I get a motion please? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, Melissa? No. Patty. I have this one. Okay. Um, all this does, it simply adds the $25 fee to the fee schedule for those who um, are going to have a, a, an Airbnb or transient lodging unit um, of some kind on their property, be it in your home, uh, in an accessory dwelling unit. It's a $25 uh, fee and this, it's not currently um, provided for in the fee schedule in a specific way and since becoming uh, in a couple of weeks here is going to become necessary for folks to have those permits um, we need to have a fee schedule have it added to the fee schedule so they know what it's going to cost them okay um, Melissa could you give us an update on the um, online process is um, well I have done my best to take the um, online form submission as far as I can. Um, I'm still having a few bugs that I'm hoping that the um, website um, company that we use can fix those. Um, I had a conversation with them probably two weeks ago and gave them my list of issues that I was having that they did recognize we're not on our end but on their end so I'm kind of at their mercy right now so um, the capability is there the functionality is a bit um, sketchy right now so um, we do have the online form uh, or we do have this form for uh, the permit uh, online so that you could print that and uh, bring it in fax it email it um, whatever you would like to Denise um, in planning and zoning but the online submission functionality um, is, is still a little problematic and do we have the ability to take credit cards online we do not right now um, with that um, we take credit cards online for utility payments but that's a different Right, vendor right, okay. um, that's associated with our utilities so we do not have that yet um, I can look into it but for the number of payments that we would probably be taking in um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it would be worthwhile um, if we were a bigger entity it might but um, I can still look into it okay. though to, to see I know our website does have that capability um, but I'd, I'd have to look into it but I can do that Okay, um, so just and just to be clear, this particular document and this payment would go to uh, Denise Swinger up in the plan, second floor planning and zoning office. Correct. Okay. Um, comments or questions from council? This is an emergency, so I will open the public hearing. Seeing and hearing no comments, I, I bring. I did have a question. question. This is an emergency, so that we can put this into effect as of January one. Yes. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Um, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, McQueen. Yes. Sims. Yes. Hempfling. Yes. Housh. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. 
Uh, now uh, the resolution 2017-54. Okay, title only? Uh, yes. Okay, this is approving replacement of the current Village of Yellow Springs Mayor and Council nominating petition with the Ohio Secretary of State's petition form 3-0. Can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. Second. Um, are you going to take this, Brian? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty brief. Um, we talked about this uh, at earlier meetings. Um, the Yellow Springs uh, sort of unique uh, nominating petition form had a variety of things that are not required under the Ohio Revised Code, such as uh, needing to get it notarized. Um, so we want to make sure that we make it as easy as possible for folks to run for public office. And um, what this will do is basically adopt the ORC form, which will also uh, align with the uh, instructions that you get at the Board of Elections so that it will be a lot easier to follow. And um, I'm very happy that we're going to move to this, uh, this uh, format. Okay. Um, any comments or questions? This is a resolution. Any comments or questions from council? Comments or questions from citizens? All those in favor? Oh, signif oh sorry. Sorry, sorry, Dave. Uh, the, I would suggest that you look at the council petition, too. It's That's faded. The copies that I got were, you know, hard to read, and people were putting dates and signatures. This is the council, it. council and mayor. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was just mayor. No, no, never both. mind. Yeah. You got yeah. it. And they said, if you get a chance, <laughs> ask him to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Which we're doing. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Twenty seventeen dash fifty five. Um, how do you want this? Do you want to read this in full? Do you want this to be read in full? Sure. Read That'd it in great. full. All right. This is supporting the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector Trail. Whereas the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector Trail is a recreational trail envisioned by a group of local leaders, including representatives from the villages of Yellow Springs and Clifton, Green County Regional Planning, Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce, Rails to Trails, Conservancy, Miami Township, Green County Parks and Trails, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, and the Ohio Department of Transportation. And whereas the proposed trail will connect the village of Yellow Springs to the village of Clifton along a route that would be in close proximity and provide access to the Clifton Gorge State Nature Preserve, John Bryan State Park, and Glen Helen Nature Preserve, and whereas the proposed Yellow Springs Clifton Connector Trail aligns with the village of Yellow Springs long-term goals, promoting quality of life and livability in and around the village as well as reducing the carbon footprint of our community, and whereas the village of Yellow Springs advocates and encourages healthy and active lifestyles around active modes of transportation as well as accessibility for people of all ages and abilities, and whereas 2017 has been designated Ohio's Year of the Trail by the House of Representatives Resolution 105 in response to resolutions adopted by the Green County Board of Commissioners as well as the villages of Yellow Springs and Clifton, and whereas more than one million individuals, both local residents and visitors, annually utilize Green County's growing paved trails network, and whereas countless individuals and families visit the Clifton Gorge State Nature Preserve, John Bryan State Park, and Glen Helen Nature Preserve, as well as the unique tourism destinations and events in the villages of Clifton and Yellow Springs, and whereas recreational trails revitalize and invigorate communities and help support economic development and growth, environmental sustainability, and public health, and whereas in the interest of health, safety, and well-being of the general public within and surrounding our community, including that of visitors, the proposed Yellow Springs Clifton Connector Trail represents a valuable asset and legacy for generations to come. Now, therefore, be it resolved that. Section 1, Yellow Springs Village Council does hereby proclaim its full support of the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector Trail and will facilitate the process of engineering, design, and construction in all ways possible, including appropriating $10,000 to help fund a preliminary engineering study that will determine the trail route and estimate the cost of the project. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Brian, we read it in full. It's pretty self-explanatory, but... Yes, um, it, I, think it, I think it says I, it. I, uh, we have the mayor of Clifton here. I'm not sure if you'd like to. I don't have any prepared statements. Uh, my name is Alex Beery. I'm the mayor of Clifton. I'm here representing um, the village of Clifton, as it were. And I think Judy uh, read that resolution beautifully. The village of Clifton and our council passed a similar resolution uh, back in October. And we've been working with those local leaders that you mentioned from um, Miami Township, um, Ken LeBlanc over in Green County Regional Planning and several others. This isn't a vanity project for, for me in Clifton, uh, and I, I, I'm not an avid bicyclist 
per se. This really is about the quality of life issues uh, that were mentioned in that resolution. Um, we don't have all the answers. For me, this project started uh, two years ago when ODOT decided they were going to resurface, which uh, full depth reclamation, resurfacing of State Route 343. Uh, I called a meeting with uh, District 8 in Lebanon and uh, Chris Mucher with Miami Township attended that meeting. And we were there just to talk about widening the shoulder of State Route 343 to accommodate some of the bicyclists that were already using the route. And we thought mm -hmm. that was in everybody's best interest. Uh, ODOT already had the funding, obviously, for an FDR um, resurfacing of the road. Well, we were told that, in fact, the road has nine foot lanes. Prevailing specs actually call for 11 foot lanes. So to even add six inches to the uh, shoulder, we would have to add four feet to the road. Once you add four feet to the road, you're getting into environmental impact studies. You're getting into uh, Army Corps of Engineer specs on waterways, et cetera, et cetera. So it was, it was quite the brick wall and we, we, uh, we retreated. Then with the year of the trail coming on, this project uh, again resurfaced and with the collective energies uh, from all the various leaders in the overlapping uh, municipalities, uh, Miami Township, and all the common interests that we share, I think this has gained quite a bit of steam in the last few months. We've had some very productive meetings, but uh, we cannot pinpoint all the various pinch points and you know hurdles and challenges that we're going to face if we don't get the engineers involved for the feasibility study. All of you understand that feasibility studies are kind of part of phase one in these types of projects. So Clifton has uh, contributed $3,000 and that again was uh, with our resolution back in October put on the table. It's uh, substantially less than $10,000 uh, understandably However, it represents quite a chunk of our general fund, so I think $10,000 is not too much to ask uh, of you today. We also plan to take that $13,000 and leverage it towards some grants that we think are available, um, which would give us $26,000, and we have been told, I understand, by uh, Tool, Tool Design is mm -hmm. the company that's gonna be uh, getting involved here on the feasibility level, that $26,000 is gonna get us well on the way to um, getting into these uh, meteor phases of the of the project, so that's why I'm here tonight, and and I appreciate uh, your consideration on this. Yeah. Alex, can you just highlight what we mean by a feasibility study? Yeah, so feasib so I would love to answer technical questions, but I can't. Uh, you know, I'm not a waterways engineer. Uh, I don't work with uh, the companies that uh, can get involved with all the ins and outs. We are looking at the proposed route, State Route 343, as I mentioned, would be the quickest uh, point A to point B uh, route as the crow flies. Um, however, uh, if, you, if you traverse State Route 343, you'll notice that there are uh, environmental easements, uh, Tecumseh Land Trust easements along that route. Uh, Glen Helen uh, is on part of that route. ODNR represents both the State Nature Preserve in Clifton and John Bryan uh, state Park, and those have uh, all sorts of different um, implications. Uh, we are looking with ODNR at a couple of existing mountain bike trails that take us all the way to the parking lot on State Route 343, which is part of the park system. Uh, ODNR is, uh, to my eye, a very willing and able to engage us in this project. They've been uh, they've been really thoughtful, but the feasibility study is uh, really what lays out the different legs of the project. We can't do any fundraising. We can't, again, answer technical questions. We can't begin to look at things that need mitigation uh, until we have a feasibility study that, that takes into account you know, those items, the engineering, um, and, and several other the, the hurdles that'll, that'll need to be uh, crossed. This is not an easy project. This is certainly, uh, I would put this under your pie in the sky uh, tabs. However, um, and again, that's, if we had a vacated rail bed that was a 3% grade, it would have been paved already. All the low hanging fruit has been, has been plucked. You know, that happened 25 years ago. Uh, those trails are, are a great success when we talk about livability and we talk about uh, smart growth. That's, that's really my uh, main interest here is smart use of public spaces um, as well as the recreational value. And so, uh, again, if, if we can get some money on the table 
it really gets us started uh, into the, the brass tax uh, areas of this project so we can start to phase in and get out of the brainstorming pie in the sky uh, portion of it. And um, as I mentioned, we've already engaged ODNR, ODOT engineers. We've engaged um, all the local leaders that overlap. And because this is the year of the trail um, and because uh, the village of Clifton is encompassed by Miami Township as well as the village of Yellow Springs, including all the unincorporated areas and the rural areas uh, between them, I think we have uh, quite a common interest in uh, promoting this, uh, this, this corridor. Thanks. Brian, anything Thank you. you wanted to add? Um, uh, yeah, I just want to reiterate um, what Alex was referring to in terms of leveraging those dollars is uh, I've had a conversation with uh, the Yellow Springs Community Foundation. Um, they, in particular, are looking for projects that involve the township, uh, so they're very interested in this. And, um, and again, highlighting that, you know, the nature of this feasibility study, as Alex said, is to basically get a price tag on the project to figure out then how we can go after funding to get it constructed. And, and to more, I mean, you get you need to know what that route is. I sure. mean, there's still some uncertainty on exactly what the route is, but it's going to be a lot of off-road, so um, off of 343. So I think that's some of the question. Um, I would also like to encourage you to um, reach out to Green County Parks and Green County itself for some potential funding, and if. If enough funding isn't gathered, I'm assuming that this expenditure won't happen. I mean, basically, this the money won't be spent until um, until enough of it is gathered. I assume that's correct. It, appropriating the, the money is not engineer. writing a check. Yeah, right. we're just asking for the the financial backing behind that right. support in the resolution. And yeah, and in fact. Um, with the Clean Ohio Fund, which we mentioned is one of the funding sources, they have a two-year look back. So any money that you invest in a project can be part of the matching for, uh, there's a 25% matching uh, that goes with those um, grants. So this can be part of that. And probably, I mean, this is a little bit more, probably the project lead needs to be determined sometime. That The group probably needs to figure out who's going to funnel the money, who's going to write the check, who's going to hold the contract with the consultant. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if that's been discussed, but... Well, that's correct. And no co-op has been formed legally or formally or otherwise, and, you know, there are quite a bit of people involved. Um, but I think that's definitely a next step. I just think this is such an important, an important project. Um, so I absolutely support it. Um, any other comments or questions from Council? Comments or questions from citizens? Mr. Donnell. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Um, I, all I would like to say as a former member of the Bicycle Enhancement Committee and the Northern Gateway Committee, uh, this has been a project that has been on the village books for probably close to 20 years. And um, the commitment that the Bicycle Enhancement Committee made to this was part of a uh, four E's project for getting bicycle enhancement uh, status for the village. Um, one of those conditions actually resulted in connecting a spur to 343. Um, the work that that particular group did resulted in getting one of the conditions met, which was putting in the stoplight um, at Cemetery and 343 and State Route 68. So I think that, <clears throat> you know, our community certainly has been committed to this um, for going on 20 years. Uh, so it's finally good to see that there's more momentum in bicycling and you know I think we were before our times but um, I fully support it. Great. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 2017-56 um, and how do you want this one? Well, how do you just read it by read it in full. Okay this is adopting a complete streets policy for the village of Yellow Springs. 
Whereas in addition to tra traditional motorized transportation, citizens of Yellow Springs regularly choose active modes of transportation, including walking and bicycling, as well as the use of mobility devices and public transit. And whereas the village of Yellow Springs has made a commitment to create a safe transportation network that allows citizens to use a varied array of modes of transportation through the adoption of a complete streets policy so that all current and projected users of the public right of way may safely and conveniently reach, reach their destination. And whereas the village of Yellow Springs recognizes that a complete streets policy helps to ensure that all users and modes of transportation are considered during the design and implementation of phases of projects. And whereas in addition to design and implementation, a meaningful complete streets policy includes consideration of education and enforcement initiatives. And whereas the adoption and implementation of a complete streets policy will encourage and facilitate walking, transit and mobility device using, use and biking, all of which have health, economic and environmental benefits. Now therefore, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section one, the Village of Yellow Springs does hereby express its intent to implement and continually develop a complete streets policy to be used in all future planning and construction endeavors within the village limits. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Brian? Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, highlight a few things. Um, a complete streets policy is, uh, you know, akin to a dig once policy in the sense that it makes you think at the beginning of the project about the needs of all users um, and all modes of transportation. Uh, it certainly is in line with what we believe in as a village. It doesn't prescribe any specific things that you have to do, but rather it's the in you know out front thinking uh, about ways that whenever we uh, uh, do anything to a street, that we think about our pedestrians, our bicyclists, uh, our folks with varying abilities, and um, I will also mention that. We will be, if we pass this policy, one of the very few communities in all of Ohio that has a complete streets policy. The last policy that was passed was uh, by the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission in 2011. So this is very innovative and it does tie into uh, what the state is now talking about, which is a state level complete streets policy um, to really recognize the importance of non-motorized transportation. And I would like to recognize Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission for their support in this. We've used their resources, we've used their policy as a, as a template for this, and they've also done some educational pieces, um, so which, which I think is really important. Um, yeah, we also got some great feedback. Um, I want to mention Barbara Mann in particular, um, who highlighted uh, the needs of our um, senior population and we've had a lot of other folks that you know drive scooters around town and that sort of thing um, so this really got a lot of great input uh, Laura Curlis again gave some great feedback as well as the uh, Yellow Springs after transportation committee so I think this could evolve further but it's it's had a lot of great input I have a question uh, about implementation when we have a development come online, we have Cresco, for example, building. We'll presumably have some development on the glass farm, any major development project. How will this and how will this policy impact uh, any kind of housing, industrial, commercial development? Right. Patty? I would, well, I was going to. Oh, yeah. say that, I mean, this has to go to planning commission. I mean, this, this needs to be integrated into the comprehensive plan. It needs to be run by planning commission. It probably should have been prior to this. It would have been nice actually to have come with planning commission um, support, but I think it can, it can certainly be the reverse. This is us developing policy at, that we then pass along to planning commission, but absolutely they need to be on board and they have been doing it. I was at the two, um, I was at three planning commission meet, or two planning commission meetings where three projects were discussed. The Cresco project, and it was discussed that they get, that they include bike racks. Um, the, how the streets are working in that development has already been, been included. Um, glass farm, let's say I'm trying to think of what, what the other one was. Um, fire the firehouse, fire. it was discussed about the firehouse. And it was all also discussed with the uh, brewery expansion down on um, 68, down south on 68, that they will actually be uh, providing bicycle 
access and, and uh, bike racks and things. So, but it, it really does start with planning commission because all of these proposals, it needs to be in the packet of information that, that um, Denise is providing to, for potential developments so that the developers, which would be the comp plan, which so that developers know what to expect and then it has to be something that is on the checklist for planning commission when they review a development plan. And, and Mary Ann, um, Denise and I and have been attending the training. I, I don't remember, Melissa, if you were available mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Um, but we've been attending the trainings at, and things that have been provided uh, through MVRPC. So um, we both understand you know, how this needs to work and, and what information needs to be passed on to, to developers. Um, it will, the next step will be, in fact, to let Planning Commission look at it and as they review the comprehensive plan, which is something they're hoping to do in 2018 or at least to start on, this will be part of that um, to be integrated into the comprehensive plan. I, I do support this and at the same time, I, I just want to understand and I guess have Planning Commission understand uh, how this would get implemented in any kind of development mm -hmm. so that if we're going to be making requests of developers that we have uh, uh, effective solutions mm -hmm. for that options right. for them as opposed to putting up a lot of hurdles well I, I mean it almost feels as if in speaking to what you're it almost feels as if there needs to be some sort of an interim piece because planning commission really needs to be looking at at what these interconnections are because a developer's not going to know what the village is expecting. So so it does really feel like there is going to be potentially a major planning piece that needs to happen here. Wouldn't you? Yes. Don't well, you? and I hope that we have a representative from planning commission uh, on the advisory committee for the active transportation plan. Yeah, it seems like that, that would, should happen. That's where we'll define a lot of right. this. And I think it also goes to staff, though, because a lot of these things are street resurfacing. A lot of the, a lot right. of things can be accomplished just when a street is resurfaced. Right. Maybe it's re, it's striped differently, and so so this really has to become embedded in right. with the staff with when they staff do maybe. any utility, mostly road work, mm -hmm. work in the parks, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Well, and I was going to say. I mean, my hope is that it will actually. Uh, given our affordability crises in the village, that this will not increase costs, but that, they, that in some in, that there will be many instances where it could decrease costs mm -hmm. um, in terms of our transportation system. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the issue of sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You know, addressing the issue of sidewalks in a different way. So, mm -hmm. uh, comments or questions from citizens? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, resolution 2017-57. I'll just do this by the non-existent title, which is this is approving a um, pay increase for the well, why don't manager. you read, just read it in full. Okie doke. <laughs> whereas council has re reviewed the performance of the village manager in accordance with the terms of her employment agreement, and whereas council has determined that based on the village manager's performance, retaining the services of Patty Bates as village manager is in the continued best interests of the village, and whereas council has determined an increase in the village manager's salary is warranted, now therefore council for the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, Patty Bates is awarded a 3% pay increase in accordance with her employment agreement with an effective date of January 1, 2018. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, we're happy with Patty. <laughs> we're very happy. She's made my last few years um, very enjoyable and comfortable and um, successful. So I appreciate it. And I think um, council all agrees. Unfortunately, she won't be here for much of another 18 months. Another 18 months. And then she's retiring, which is great for her not yeah, great for the village but great for her well, you just you know it may be great for the village maybe the person <laughs> who comes after me is a is a, a wonderful incredible yeah. manager and uh, okay. you'll be happy to see me gone but for now you're stuck with me so thank you <laughs> well and and i do want to highlight um if anyone's paid any attention at all to what's been going on in the village for the last couple of years, uh, you would have noticed that a lot of things have gotten done that had been kicked down the road for a while. And um, 
it's just incredible. And you know, honestly, you know, if it wasn't for Patty's leadership, as well as a great uh, village team, we would not be able to accomplish everything that we have. Absolutely. Thank you. And and I want to echo what what people have said, uh, council members have said tonight about my staff because this is hands down far and away the best and most professional and talented staff I have ever worked with in my 30 plus years. Hey. <laughs> so. And what about the council? And the council. <laughs> I was saving my council comments for the next couple of resolutions. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Do you want me to read the next one, Judy? Yeah. I can read it. Okay. I can read Patty, it. why don't you read it? Are you kidding me? It? You want to read Come it? Come on. Are you just if you want it first? No, no, we're doing hers. We're doing that, we're doing that next after this. We're week. doing Judy's. Judy, you want to read it or you want me to read oh, it? Oh, I'm fine reading it. This is why I was trying to get away with it by talking. But do you have, but do you have, and you're, you've got your number, okay? I do. I do. So whereas council has reviewed the performance of the council clerk in accordance with the terms of her employment agreement and whereas council has determined that based on the clerk's performance retaining the services of Judy Kintner as council clerk is in the continued best interests of the village and whereas council has determined that an increase in the council clerk's salary is warranted now therefore council for the village of Yellow Springs Ohio hereby resolves that section one Judy Kintner is further awarded a two million oh I'm sorry <laughs> 2.5 percent pay increase in accordance with her employment agreement with a date effective January 1 2018. That was a good try. Yeah. Uh, can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. Um, ditto for Judy. I mean, she's she's amazing. I mean, and obviously for me, um, the last four years have been very much helped by her. And the previous, however many, I don't remember how many, that she and I actually worked together. So. Um, Judy has a lot of work to do. Um, she gets it done very effectively, and and she serves the community and council very well. They're yeah. here. Did yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, Judy, uh, for most welcome your patience and guidance and uh, and uh, everything you do for us yes. and the community. Thank you. Appreciate that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> okay, now we have. Out of order. Yeah, really. Now we have 2017 61, which is so exciting. Absolutely. Title only, please. This it's is. It's titles long enough. Authorizing the village manager to engage the law firm of Walter Haverford jointly with the Regional Income Tax Agency and other municipalities for the purpose of challenging the constitutionality of amendments to Chapter 718 of the Ohio Revised Code relating to municipal income tax. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Chris, are you going to take this one? Please. Okay. Without any way, without waiving any attorney-client confidences, uh, at the last council meeting we discussed uh, potential litigation in the executive session. Um, at that time, uh, the, we were aware that uh, there are, it was one lawsuit that had been filed in regard to House Bill 49. House Bill 49 uh, is another attempt by the state to um, uh, take control from local municipalities in certain matters, which is a continuing effort by uh, Columbus to uh, interfere with municipalities' home rule rights. In this case, um, the state is attempting to centralize the collection of net uh, profit uh, uh, taxes from businesses, charge a 5% fee, um, and then uh, purportedly disperse that money back to the community. Um, the, at the time that we had the executive session, we were aware that the, uh, the law firm Frost Brown had undertaken uh, to represent a number of municipalities and they were going to charge a minimal retainer, but it was going to be a pay per uh, pay for service uh, litig piece of litigation. Um, last Thursday, um, uh, Rita, uh, which uh, the Village of Yellow Springs is a member of, uh, and they uh, collected and administer our income tax program. Uh, filed their own lawsuit on behalf of its members in Lorain County. Uh, there are, uh, at the moment, 21 named municipalities. Um, Rita did that, uh, filed the lawsuit without having contacted all of its members, um, in part because they perceived that there wasn't time because there had already been one lawsuit filed. So they wanted to get their lawsuit filed, let its membership know, and then uh, allow members to opt in. Whether the village opts into the litigation by name um, is 
what this resolution is about. However, the economics of the uh, lawsuit are uh, fundamentally different for the village than it would be had they joined in the, had the village joined in the Frost Brown lawsuit. Uh, Rita is undertaking this litigation on behalf of its own, all of its members, whether they uh, opt into a being named party to the lawsuit or not. Um, it's considered to be an administrative cost. Uh, under the uh, under the, our participation in Rita, so in other words, there won't be any out-of-pocket expense uh, for the village, or at least that's what they're telling us. Um, the uh, this is a, a significant issue um, because of again, it's another attempt by the state. We're seeing that with the mini cell towers. That litigation, by the way, has been somewhat successful. There is uh, uh, Patty's received some updates. I have not yet through my circle, but Patty has that that litigation is bearing some fruit. Uh, in terms of what ultimately may go back to the state to, to pass some new legislation. So th th everyone's hopeful that um, that these lawsuits will cause some discussion to, to occur um, that will uh, help protect the interests of the village. But the short version is that this resolution would authorize Patty to sign the retainer agreement with the law firm, with Rita, uh, and uh, to participate by name. Um, as a defendant, or pardon me, as a plaintiff in the litigation. Now, there's one other piece to this. Uh, beginning uh, at the next council meeting in January, uh, welcome new council members. <laughs> You're going to get this one quick. Um, House Bill 49 also included some uh, administrative changes to House Bill 5, which we passed in 2015, which changed the income tax process. Um, Rita is uh, recommending that we do some housekeeping cleanup um, to our existing legislation. Um, and then there's another rub here, which is uh, the way the House Bill 49 uh, legislation was written, if municipalities do not enact the provisions um, that House Bill 49 has by January 31st, 2018, in theory, uh, the state could sanction the municipalities, um, which th that sanction would uh, most likely be some threat or a real or actual of uh, trying to withhold monies that would otherwise be entitled to the municipality. Um, the, the consensus seems to be, and I'm still fleshing this out because I just learned this about this three days ago, is that by participating as a named plaintiff in the litigation, um, and the attempt to get injunctive relief to prevent the state from implementing the law would then allow those municipalities, Rita members, to not have to pass the legislation for the more draconian aspects of House, House Bill 49. Um, so um, I planted the seeds there to our new members of council and our council members who will be staying on uh, for what will happen in January's discussion. but. For today's purposes, really all we're asking with the recommendation from the solicitor's office is to approve the resolution allowing Patty to sign off on the village so that it can participate in the litigation as a named plaintiff. Any questions? <laughs> and again, just to reiterate, you said at this point um, there's no financial obligation for In the my village? discussions with, with Rita's legal counsel, there would not be. Even if we're a named plaintiff? Correct. In fact, if, we, if, if counsel opted not to participate by name, we would still be contributing to that administrative cost vis-a-vis -vis our membership. And, but mm -hmm. the key here is that um, there appears to be the, the model is that there would be no dollars flowing out from the village to pay in the way that it would have had we joined in the Frost Brown uh, initiated litigation. Okay. Any other comments or questions? And I, I mean, I, somehow we need to, this legislature is, the state legislature just seems determined to take money away from municipalities in whatever way they can. And uh, OML, Ohio Municipal League, um, groups, organizations, Rita, individual municipalities have been going to them lobbying it, for the past couple of years, and it just doesn't seem to be helping. So. Um, I'm not sure what is going to change the uh, change the attitude toward municipal income tax, but um, in the state, but it's frustrating uh, because they are taking the money that citizens that that is set aside for us. So um, anyway, comment. Yep. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. 
2017-59. This is appreciation for Gerald Sims' six years of service as a council member. Whereas Gerald Sims has served with insight, compassion, and devotion on Village Council since his election in 2011 and again in 2015, and whereas both Council and the Village of Yellow Springs have benefited from his willingness to listen closely to all sides of a debate and to weigh them against the greater good, and whereas Mr. Sims brought an unprecedented level of interest and understanding to his role as an excellent employer, often working alongside the Village crew or lending a hand during a power outage or storm, and whereas Mr. Sims embodied the principle of think before you speak and distinguished himself as a thoughtful participant in council debates, and whereas council wishes to honor Gerald Sims' commitment and service to the village of Yellow Springs, to village staff, and to council, now therefore council for the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, Gerald Sims is hereby officially recognized for his devotion to his community as shown through his service on Yellow Springs Village Council. Section 2, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby advises relax relaxation and enjoyment of the first, second, and third Mondays of the month, as well as during the many hours you would have spent in assisting the village crew, helping during, a, during an emergency event, or talking with your constituents. Section 3, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs will officially miss your presence at council table. Uh, can I get a motion, please? So I so move. move. Second. <laughs> Third board. <laughs> I was smiling to, you know, then I spoke before I thought. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I've gotten to know Jerry uh, these last two years, and uh, he's a quieter member, but he is a very thoughtful and wise man and kind hearted. We're going to miss him, definitely. Yep. Yeah, I just I want to elaborate on uh, him getting out there in the mix with our crew. Um, I, you know, I, I still remember the time I was going down uh, West South College, and there's Jerry with the, the snowblower clearing the sidewalks, and uh, and he's been you know he's out there keeping Johnny company when uh, the power goes out, and uh, it's incredible. I've learned a lot as well, and Jerry, thanks so much for. Uh, being a great mentor. Maybe you'll have more time now. <laughs> yes. That's right. True. Yes, Jerry's been great to serve with, and it's uh, I'll miss him and everybody else. But um, Jerry's been an incredible uh, addition for six years, and uh, the community has benefited greatly from his long years of, of residency in the village, his connection to the schools, having served on the school board, and just brought a great deal of insight to, uh, to council. Um, and he definitely deserves the, deserves the relaxation and break he's going to get. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I would like to say, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary. No. no. I, I would like to say, Jerry, thank you. You have, um, you have helped me. You have mentored me and counseled me, and I appreciate it very much. Sharing your wisdom. And, and if I could, could say something uh, short and so forth, uh, I want to uh, thank the village and, and the community members. Uh, I was uh, fortunate that they had confidence in me to elect me to a four-year term uh, and then their confidence kind of waned a little bit. Um, <laughs> and they elected me to a two-year term. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I fully enjoyed it. Uh, I, I have had uh, no regrets uh, from uh, being a, a, a public official. But there are a few people that I really want to thank. Uh, number one, Patty, for the, the job that she has done to make my job uh, a little bit easier uh, since she's been our village manager. But I also want to thank our staff, uh, starting with the, our, our police de department that allowed me to ride with them. And it, and it gave me a chance to get, them, get to know them and for them to know me, uh, working with Johnny and his crew, 
and before uh, Johnny, it was Kelly Fox. Uh, I found out what it was like to get down in, in the cold water, in the mud and dirt, and, and, and fix a water main break so that our citizens in certain areas had water. Uh, Jason uh, and his crew, and now Johnny's crew, uh, I learned what it was to be cold on a long winter night as they cleaned the snow off of Zinya Avenue so that when the businesses and the residents came down the next day, they didn't have to fear about slipping or falling on, on the ice or snow. Uh, Brad and his crew uh, out at the water in the uh, water plant in the sanitary plant. Uh, it, it, it's a smelly job, but those guys go out there uh, every day to make sure that our environment is safe from the runoff from uh, our waste and, and disposal. Melissa and, and the ladies downstairs in the uh, f finance area uh, I got to know some of the problems that they have, the frustrations that they get on the 15th and 16th of the month when the utility bills are due and then have to face some of the scorn when we unfortunately have to cut off someone's utility. Uh, Ruth Ann, who's not here, uh, she has been amazing. Uh, when when I call in, it may be trivial things, but she either answers right away or, or she gets back to me. Uh, and it, it, we can't function without the employees that we have. Now, now the, the, there's one other thing I need to do, and I need to, to step outside and come right back in. But but there's been two people who that really have made my job easier and made it a pleasure, a pleasure to, to work and serve in the village. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I hope they're not here. <laughs> if, if my coat had been outside, I would have ran home. <laughs> but, but I didn't. <laughs> First to uh, to Judy Kidman. Oh. Uh, whenever I called and, and need answers to anything, Judy was always there. I know sometimes I called her after hours, but she read her voice, you know, when she got back. <laughs> now, this is a small plant <laughs> because I know that you will continue to grow in your assignment as a uh, village clerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as that plant grows, you will continue to grow it and mature. Uh -huh. And for my friend and partner in, in crime, I have a big plant. <laughs> And it's, it's probably not big enough <laughs> to uh, represent all that you have done for the village. Uh, Karen was, was on council when, when I was elected and so forth. And uh, she kind of taught me the ropes. And, and I really appreciate that. And uh, she has had a difficult task. Um, Number one, being a council member, and number two, being president of council. She kept us online. She <laughs> made sure we had all the information that we needed to uh, get the job done. So I do appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. At least we're going out together. <laughs> this man got me on the GL. <laughs> <laughs>
can't do what you, you need to do. <laughs> this young lady, I, I was fortunate enough to uh, interview her when we were looking for a finance director. And she really brought forward uh, the enthusiasm of a young person. And I think she's grown as she's worked here and so forth. And Melissa, <laughs> keep up the good work. And, Thank you. And I'll follow your future. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And, and She's made my life, plus she's also made the village's life a lot better. We got things done, and we will continue to do things. And uh, please call me back the day that you decide to be really retire, because <laughs> I want to be at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We have one thing in common. <laughs> Besides your, Besides your outfits? <laughs> when Brian came on board, I said, Brian, come on, I'm going to take you to dinner. And we kind of talk about what you're going to get yourself into. <laughs> and when I decided that I wasn't going to run anymore, anymore, and my last meeting coming up, Brian said, hey, come on, I want to take you out to dinner so I can kind of show you what you now need to be doing. <laughs> so, Brian, I, I appreciate everything that you've done. So, thanks, Jerry. And, and Mary Ann? Jerry? We, we haven't always agreed. No. But, but we have agreed. <laughs> and, and, and one thing that, you know, she kind of taught me about nature. Because yeah. uh, Brian and, and Johnny can tell you a good story about what I thought of beavers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they can't. No, they can't. But, you know, it, it taught me something about nature. And, and I think one of the, the good things why I didn't always agree with it is we got a place now out at the, the uh, glass farm where people can come and enjoy nature. And if it wasn't for the uh, push and enthusiasm, <laughs> Of oh, Patty, I mean about whoever she is. Of <laughs> uh, uh, Marianne, <laughs> you know, we we wouldn't have some of the things that we have. So Marianne, thank you. you know, keep fighting for uh, the environment as you do, yeah, and I appreciate you. it. Thank you. <laughs> and, and to Judith, uh -oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, Judith has been around probably almost as long as I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I first got on council, Judas was, was the president. And we had many challenges at that time. And Judas helped us get through that. Uh, it, things did turn a little rougher, and she had to take a, take a break <laughs> from, from council. But she decided to come back. And with any type of uh, public body. You have to have those that disagree and those that, ag that agree. You have to have those that are willing to stand up for what they believe in and fight for what they believe in. But uh, one thing I did learn uh, from Judith is that everybody is important. Within the village, we need those areas and, and, and those housing units for those that may not be at the same level as some of us. She has taught me that. But the other thing that she also has taught me that, you know, we need to look for the future and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. And as I sat down, the village is going to have many challenges, and I think we have elected good people to carry on uh, within council and so forth. But the challenge that, that I do leave, I want to leave with the new council 
that's coming in. We do need housing. We need housing that not only will help those that are in need or affordable housing as you want to define it, but affordable housing also means that we need to attract the young up and coming that will help sustain the village in the future. So as the new council looks at housing, looks at the glass farm, looks at other areas, this remember that it takes both ends of the spectrum in order for us to succeed and, and, and uh, keep that in mind that we do make a place out of the glass farm that will embrace and handle all that come behind us. With that, I'm, I'm, glad, to, I'm, I'm glad to now go home and rest, <laughs> but by it, I am sad to, to leave all the great people, not only in this room, on the council, but in the community that I have met, that I have worked for, and they have supported me. Thank you. Favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I think, think Mr. Burns has something to say. Jerry, oh. I've been here for four years, uh, actually three years, 11 months, and you've been on council, but I'm not going to let you get away that soon. Oh, wow. Because we have got you a jacket. Uh -huh. Oh, an nice. crew member. <laughs> and at any time you want to come and help the crew, yeah. you're more than welcome. Oh. So speaking of which, it was the water main break is fixed. Yes, Great. <laughs> so if you live on near Allen, somewhere down there, you're happy right now. You can take a shower. <laughs> um, okay. Resolution, did we did just vote, right? Yes. Uh, okay, 60, resolution 2017-60. All right, this is appreciation for Karen Wintrow's 12 years of service as a council member. Whereas Karen Wintrow has served with energy, compassion, and dedication on Village Council for 12 years, since her election in 2005, in 2009, and again in 2013, and whereas both council and the Village of Yellow Springs have benefited from Karen's ability to navigate the waters of controversy with skill and fairness, and whereas in her role as council president, which she held during 2007 and again from 2013 until the present, Karen has been a valued leader and colleague in many diverse debates and difficult decisions. And whereas Karen brought a passion for intelligent and responsive development of commerce to the table, which has positively impacted the village as a whole, and whereas council wishes to honor Karen's commitment and service to the village of Yellow Springs, to village staff, and to council, now therefore council for the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, Karen Wintrow is hereby officially recognized for her devotion to her community as shown through her service to, on Village Yellow Springs Village Council. Section 2, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby advises relaxation and enjoyment of the first and third Mondays of the month, as well as during the many hours you would have spent in research, reading, consultation, meetings with staff, and preparation for council meetings. Section 3, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs will officially miss your presence at council table. Can I get a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. Good. Um, so, I mean, everything Jerry said, I mean, and I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to, I just can't take the time to thank everyone, but what he said really was on point for um, how, he, how he spoke about every council member and every staff member. Um, I mean, this staff is really second to none, and it has been from the beginning, and since Patty's been here, um, it has really pulled together. I mean, the amount of work we've gotten done um, has been amazing. We're ready to launch a new water plant, which is something that was 50 years in the making um, and is so, going to be so important to this community. Um, the Cresco groundbreaking on Thursday um, couldn't have been a prouder moment for me. I mean, it's really 
was what I, I um, was one of my major goals was to was to um, encourage and and facilitate development and I think that that's a perfect uh, project for the community and now that we'll have uh, all those other acres to develop I'm really excited for what's going to happen nobody's going to get rid of me I'm still at the Chamber of Commerce so I will be and street fair is still happening thanks to Alex <laughs> so um, you guys won't be rid of me you'll probably see me just as much as you did um, it just won't be as much fun maybe I don't know maybe it'll be more fun I don't know because <laughs> there's definitely some things about this that weren't all fun but um, um, I just you know I'm I have more time to spend with my husband. I appreciate Ted being here. He was here the night I was sworn in back in 2005, and along with my son, which I, who I will see in about four days, five days, so that'll be nice. Um, so um, I just, I, I just want to thank everybody. This, see, I knew this was going to happen. Um, this is a great group of people. I've gotten to know Lisa and, and Kevin um, before and after the election, and I'm very excited for what they're going to bring to council. It's exactly the reason I decided not to run this time, is that you, there needs to be new energy, there needs to be new, um, new thinking and new, um, new approaches. So I knew it was time. It'll actually give me more opportunity to, to, to do the work, my work at the chamber, so I'll, I'll, I'll hope Hopefully, um, actually have more time to spend um, working for the village, and that's what I intend to keep doing. That's what I've been doing since we've been here. Um, this is a really surprising thing for me. In the article that Diane wrote, I really appreciate. I don't appreciate really the picture nice. quite so much, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the but the article. Um, I know we had difficulty. We knew. I knew it was going to not be a great picture, but that's okay. Um, um, it it really you know it's a, it's a great article and really spoke to to how I felt about this. This was really one of the most surprising things I've ever done. It's not I never thought I would I would be an elected official and and uh, it's it's taken me places that I didn't expect. Really connected me to the region, connected the community to the region. I really hope that you know I know that Brian, especially in his role with Rails to Trails, is is also very connected to the region and I and I think that the rest of the folks are too and and that's just so important we're such an important part of this region and our voice especially in Greene County our voice has to be heard so um, because we're the only one speaking this this story um, in Greene County so um, I encourage everybody to continue in the region can continue outreach and continue to support um, citizens um, honestly I agree with everything that, that Jerry said as far as the housing piece is concerned um, we need a lot of housing um, so um, and uh -huh. we need to welcome lots of lots of citizens lots of businesses welcome people into the community so um, I want to thank the citizens who elected me and I three three times and I want to thank those that supported me and um, I continue to ask for your support as I'm at the chamber thank everybody thank my fellow council members and my staff I would just like to just take 15 seconds. When, when in 2005, when Karen was elected, this village was very divided. I mean, the council meetings were were not friendly places, and I attribute a lot of the peace and tranquility since 2005 to Karen and pulling people together. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> well, I expressly came to. Uh, say my public farewells to Karen and to Jerry. Um, I had a lot to say, but Jerry took all my time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll really keep it brief. Uh, during our orientation, I learned um, a, a lot about the things that Jerry did, the, you know, the storm and, and uh, helping the guys out. 
Uh, I want a jacket like that. So <laughs> I will, I will yeah, vow, no. I will vow to consider trying to fill some of Jerry's <laughs> shoes. I mean, I've said it before uh, when we uh, doing our orientation. You know, I often joke with people and say, "Hey, I want to be you when I grow up." I don't know that I could do all of what you have done, but but I will, I will make the effort. I will make the effort. You've. Uh, really set the bar high. Uh, Jerry is a community servant, um, but I but I will take on the challenge, and and I'll try to pluck a couple of leaves off of that tree. Uh, Karen probably thought whenever we were in spinning class and fitness classes that that um, she was just having general conversation, but she became my mentor, um, and really gave me uh, a lot of settling advice um, about this job and. Um, how to uh, you know portray myself and just how to handle certain situations. So Karen, I I value you as a dear friend. Um, uh, now I'm trying to to work out my schedule so I can go to spinning class more often so I can uh, pedal right along with you. But I appreciate all the wisdom and advice, advice and encouragement that you've given me. I'm sure I echo a lot of the sentiments. But uh, I will certainly miss you guys. But I'll I'll be tugging your ear, uh, looking for continued words of wisdom. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of the gifts have a meaning. Jerry, you know yours safety wise. Karen, we want you to take this hard hat. We had it personalized. We want it to hang in your office so you can continue to help the village develop and, and for us to grow as a village. And it should see a lot of groundbreakings and ribbon cutting ceremonies. <laughs> just just, uh, just quick uh, words uh, since we probably need to move on soon, but I uh, just want to say I came on to council 2005 when Karen was elected. We were elected together. Um, and I very much appreciate uh, the work that Karen has done. She's been a great leader to our community. She's, uh, we've had our differences, but we've always worked it through. We've had a very cordial relationship. I feel uh, a lot of appreciation for all that Karen's done for the community, and I want to I want to thank you. Thanks. Um, so, when I ran for council in two, 2013, um, the thing I put out there was that I wanted to work with Karen. And uh, when I came to town, I was just amazed that there was somebody like Karen in Yellow Springs who just had so much. Uh, gumption so much uh you know go at it do it and uh it really motivated me so much um we've been such great friends uh since i've been here and there are 12 roses over there for karen's 12 years and uh i thought i'd keep it short um because i don't like to get emotional so i wrote down 12 words that make me think of karen uh direct <laughs> we all know that uh energetic most of my late night texts and early morning texts are with Karen. Super knowledgeable. I have not, I, I can't believe how much Karen knows and how much she's taught me. Um, smart, not just in terms of intellect, but also in terms of a wonderful dresser. Uh, fun, we always have a blast everywhere we go. Open-minded. I, I've always been impressed that Karen really listens at this table and, and, and often changes her mind based on what we talk about. Engaged, again, we all know that. Connected, I mentioned this in the article. She knows everybody in the region, everywhere we go. Karen, Karen, um, super cool, all right? I hope I grow up to be as cool as Karen. Passionate about this community dedicated to everything she does and really with it. I mean, I have learned so much about leadership from Karen Wintrow and um, I hope that I can carry the torch. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, Karen, I think that over the last three and a half years, 
I, between the texts and the phone calls and the emails and the personal meetings, I have probably spent more time with you than I have with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can guarantee that <laughs> on my side. Um, but that's a good thing. Um, from the day that you called me and told me I got this job that sent me hopping around the IHOP in Milford, um, one, some people were looking at me. Um, you have been there for me to bounce ideas off of, thoughts. Um, you have let me blow off steam when I needed to. And you've always tried to put me down the right path. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get to say um, something about Jerry, so I, I want to do both at the same time. So, um, Jerry, I, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity that you gave me when you were in that interview with Kent Bristol and you hired me. This has definitely been one of the best decisions of my life coming here and working for the village and working with all of you. And I don't know what it is that you've seen in me, but I'm glad that you've seen it and I'm, I'm still here and I'm, I'm a lifer, as I've said. So. I love this place and I'm, I'm thankful for everything that you've done and for believing in me because it means the world to me. And Karen, I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> I do. Your energy and your passion are just so inspiring to me and I look up to you more than what I've, I'll ever be able to put into words and that you'll ever know. I think you're an amazing person inside and out and I, I truly mean that you're, you're, you're a true mentor to me. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, last thing I'm going to say, all those in favor, this will, be, and this will be the last time I say that this at this table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe we should have a little oh, yeah. break and then some cupcakes. And Heidi's got to open the... We're going to do... Don't we? Because we've got no, some big discussion items. No break. Yeah, we, know, we need yeah, tiny break. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Five minutes. Cupcake break? Is that what we're doing? I have a cough drop. Pat, I've got here. Oh, you can always get the hook up. Jerry? I was going to toss one of those. You stopped coughing. I was like, oh, maybe she's good. Brian, you have to get out there so we can see the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> That's right. And then notice I've still got my, uh, my tennis shoes on. Right. So that's sure the cupcakes Oh, yes. Well, at least you're I know. I can text you if it looks like you're very funny, but yeah. <laughs> Did you see the pants? The matching pants? <laughs> I'm so glad you sent me that link. This was like, I mean, I, yeah, I opened my, I mean, <laughs> and I, uh, I got one for my brother, too. A different one. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. they said they're like a Hawaiian Christmas flower or something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Beautiful. <laughs> I take care of time. I I probably shouldn't have taken two. I am so happy that I got to come to you. I know, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Thank <laughs> you.
Um, sort of, kind of. I don't know why that was made such a time, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know why that was, we didn't just vote on it. I just thought it. I know. It's pretty awesome. I think we need to look at our practice. His speech with I, I, I think we should look at our practice. Actually, I love that. That was so great. I was so great. So great. About it, but I wasn't yeah. implying that, you know, it was crazy. I got my Christmas card. God, she says pictures are so cute. I know. So what you get her for Christmas? Yeah, I got her a walker and like some other toys and stuff. I didn't get her a whole bunch of stuff. So she got. Did she see Santa? Yes, she. Yeah, we took her to. Oh, that. Fran, she and Xenia. She's just staring, stared up at him, kicked her shoes off. Because she's too young. I mean, next yeah. year maybe. Next she'll year she freak might out. freak out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure at this point she's like, yeah. <laughs> What's well, everything your face? Well, everything she looks at is probably like mm -hmm. a surprise. Yeah. Oh, where was I yesterday? I was somebody. I, I was someplace, and I said, I said hi to some little boy. And this little boy is about two years old. He could barely talk. And he said to his mom, "Stranger danger." Oh. It was the most bizarre, strange, strange danger. danger about you, about me. Yeah. Were you giving him a funny look? No, I don't think so. I, I forget what I said to him. It was the weirdest thing. I've never had a kid do that. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, it's funny, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want my kid to say that to somebody. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, probably should have taken two. Oh, there's a ton. Oh, look, the cabal. I am. Which, is that, is that was the picture, wasn't it? No, it, that's a different one. No, she's just like freaking out. You should have told Tim to take your phone or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll just leave you here. Did you say that was the most people wanted? That's what I think, that's think so. so. Oh, is that what they are? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's great. Hey, 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 I saw your saying, but I <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there must be somewhere. What time is it? Oh, that's cool. I know. I love it. I wouldn't mind there being, but I guess if they, if they probably can't put a village logo on it because then maybe I'll put a chamber logo on it. So, like, guys, let's give it maybe a couple of minutes and reconvene. Marianne. <laughs> Yo, you, uh, two minutes. Well, the, the IL dot yellow springside oh dot us will get you there. Yeah, but it's the, you have to have the VIL. I know that is so amazing. What is that? Is it just? It's really, I guess it's just black black. It's just like shiny black black, and that's like black. Just black nothing. Yeah, you can see it's got oh, fingerprints. Be careful. <laughs> What is it? I, I can't see that small print. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Are, did you get a cupcake? Do you want to introduce Spencer? Yeah, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I see was the only thing that was kind of reflected, but what's on that? <clears throat> Ready to get started? Is everybody? Oh, Judy's not here. Yeah, Judy's just out in the hall. Oh. I can have this in here. I'll take notes. 
so we can add her. She might be a minute. Oh, yeah, she might be a second. Go ahead. Uh, so we'll reconvene. Um, before we get to citizens' concerns, I do want to um, do another thank you and a, an introduction. Um, Susan Gartner is um, moving on. Um, I don't know if this will be her last meeting, um, but um, we have hired a new um, <laughs> station, what do we call it, station manager? Yes. Station manager for Channel 5, Spencer. And yes. what's his name? Glazer. Glazer. Spencer Glazer. Spencer Glazer, sorry. Um, he's been here for the filming the last two meetings. Antioch student, are you a current student? Uh, just graduated. Just gra congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> and thank you to Susan. She has, she stepped in when we really needed help here and has really helped get things on the straight and narrow with Channel 5 and has worked really hard to keep, keep some interesting content on Channel 5 besides their scintillating council and planning commission meetings. So um, she's gone back and found archives and things of fun things happening in Yellow Springs. So uh, she has contributed greatly to, uh, to to moving Channel 5 forward, and I know Spencer will even more. I think that um, actually the idea of, of him and, and Kevin potentially working together, since Kevin's IT and um, an Antioch person, that there may be some even more fun things coming. So welcome, and thank you so much, Susan. Thanks, Susan. And I'd like to thank Susan. I think that you have been a very gracious presence in this room. You know, you have a certain amount of informality and friendliness and it's just had a nice impact in this space. Yeah. Susan does have one more meeting. With one us. more? Mm -hmm. ah. Okay. So we'll ah. say more nice things about yeah. you at She's the next <laughs> Um, now we will open it up for citizens concerns about items that are not on the agenda we ask that you come up to the podium and state your name and keep your comments to three minutes anyone have anything to say okay um, we will move on to old business the first uh, item of old business is the justice system task force uh, the citation and warnings report um, Judith, are you going to introduce uh, I would this? like to say a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then Pat's really going to. Okay. Pat and John, I think, are, are giving presentations, and maybe Beth, I'm not sure. Beth Crandall's been helping. Um, I just wanted to say um, when we decided to take this on, it was in part because with um, criminal justice reform, uh, you know, uh, doing data collection to monitor, to know what's going on and to monitor what's going on is a standard and important practice. Um, and so I think uh, John and uh, Pat in, in, in the uh, initially, you know, really took this on. John probably put in, I don't know, 50 hours at least, probably more, uh, in terms of, um, and, and, and took the initiative to contact right states, uh, Mike Bottomley. Uh, we offered, uh, one of the mistakes I think we made was that we, we asked him to do the work, Mike, and we, he said it would take two hours. And to say, to, in fairness to Mike Bottomley, he's probably put in 20, 30, 40 hours, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. He put in a lot more time than two hours. So part of the problem with that is that we then did not ask him to come and present to the, to the committee. And so there were some confusions, you know, and just from our lack of experience, et cetera, that came out of that. Um, he did send, a, I did ask him to go to the, come to the last um, committee meeting and he was not able to attend. And he then sent a clarification report uh, which I think is, has been very helpful. Uh, part of what he explained is that this was an exploratory study, and one of the things that I don't think we could have really done in the study is to uh, the the discrepancies that are are uh, found in the study, um, what the causes are. That's not something that they tested for or probably could test for. So. Um, you know, people may come up with their own conclusions about causes, but that's not something that a study like this could test for. Um, I think that's with that, um, and uh, the committee spent a lot of time on this. I want to reference Ellis Jacobs' letter uh, of appreciation and just uh, to the council for 
uh, letting us go forward with this study and uh, appreciation for the committee's work on it. With no further ado, Pat is going to do an overview. Thanks, Judith. Um, Pat Dewey's Justice System Task Force, and I'm here with my colleagues on the uh, project, the Police Data Na Analysis Project. Uh, John Hemplin, uh, who after I say a few things is going to explain our research design and findings from that report. Um, and Beth Crandall, who is our citizen consultant. Beth is, um, has a great deal of experience and uh, skill in statistics and weirdly enough she actually likes it. <laughs> so she's been very, very helpful and um, she's here to answer, help answer any questions that come up after we uh, give the report. And I just want to make a couple of main points that Judith started to make. Um, as a committee, we had consensus that this is important work to do. I mean, this is very critical to organize and look at policing data. It, creates, it is central to creating the culture of transparency, to know what's going on. Um, it tells all of us what types of crimes might be occurring in the community. Not that our report did not do this, but it could do this. Um, it looks at policing activities, which is what we did, and how the police is interacting with the community. Who are they citing and what for? And again, as Judith said, we didn't have the resources to go into all of the questions, but we got started with what's happening or what can we see if we take a big look backwards. Um, and we want to know that that activity is lined up with policing values. And that's where it becomes really central to this whole thing of having community values line up with the values of the police department and their activities. And it also brings up questions about how things might be improved in the community as well as in the police department. So that was the first point, that it's really important work. It's central to the, to the goals of this project. Um, to analyze data. And we did, we really did a good job and we did an amazing job considering what a big job it is. And it was important work and we did it as well as we could and I think that we did it pretty well. Um, the second point is we did it to learn because we knew that it was important and we wanted to find out, well what, you know, what kind of information is collected in these records that the police department must, they must put in a lot of their data by law, they have to be recording their citations, they have to be recording even their warnings, what's in there. Um, so that was the first question to find out like what's there and then also to learn what, what's involved in doing an analysis, a fair analysis, what's involved in the benchmarks. And now we're at the place of trying to learn like what's the best kind of reporting uh, with the community and even with the council and certainly with the, with the police department. Um, I guess the other thing is that, we'll, that we would go to next is after we have a finding, and this um, brings up some findings of concern, um, because it's exploratory, as Judith said, it doesn't say why something is happening. And um, I'll use one of our less surprising findings as an example. Um, we found in doing this analysis over a period of, gosh, how many years? Six. Six years over a period. Six and three quarters. Six and three quarters years. Over that period of time, young people in our village between the ages of 15 and 20 something, they have more warnings from the police than people over the age of 60, like me, who are too tired to get into trouble. Who, who is surprised by this? No one. No one is surprised by this finding. But what we don't know is why, what, why were they given warnings? What were they doing? Is it just speeding or were, was there something else going on? Anything connected with drugs that would be more concerning? We don't really know why and this study doesn't tell us why. So that would lead to the next step and the next step might be what could be done either in terms of how the police interact with young people or how young people are trained in certain, well, for example, driver's education. So the exploratory nature of it means that we come to these findings, we see that they're serious and we should think about them and talk about them and maybe do a next level of analysis. Because the exploratory findings, you can't come to a conclusion. You can't really come to any conclusion with them. It's just showing that relationship. 
So I, I would say that those are the important things. It's important to do this work. We did it to learn. We did a lot of learning. And it's exploratory. We'll have next steps. So now John is going to explain the report itself and the main findings. Thanks, Pat. Hi. Um, so just for a uh, would like to make um, one clarification um, that on the one hand, uh, basically a research into um, the disparities is something where uh, you just won't be able to um, <coughs> figure out causality. You can just say, okay, well, uh, for example, um, to quote from this, to, to quote a document that I quoted when I made the request for funds, um, uh, from Sonia Starr, a law professor at the University of Chicago. Uh, broad disparity statistics entail simple comparisons across racial groups with the per capita rates of police interactions or similarly comparisons of a group's population share to its share of police interactions. Such statistics have played an important role in debates about race and policing. Um, for example, one study recently found, quote, Blacks were subject to 63% of pedestrian stops, <coughs> even though they made up just 24% of Boston's population. Um, and so that, that's just sort of the nature of disparity statistics. Um, and the only way to look into causality would be to um, design experiments, which would obviously be expensive, probably unfeasible in a small community, um, and possibly unethical and dangerous um, to basically have people uh, pretend to commit violations on the street and then test you know, in a controlled fashion. Anyway. Um, but that's separate from the question of whether or not the study is exploratory. Um, it's exploratory because uh, basically this is sort of the first go at looking at the statistics. And in theory, we could um, look deeper at some of the questions that are raised by the study. Um, but it would still be just more disparity statistic, st statistical analysis. Um, and then just a note on the, the uh, I think, I'll, I think I'll come to that later. First, um, I just, uh, I think I'll go through first in terms of explaining um, the research questions, making sure that you guys feel comfortable in terms of your understanding of what the um, data set was that we were doing this, the analysis on. Um, and then we can talk about the findings. Uh, so feel free to stop me at any point. We can, of course, go back to these if, um, when we're discussing the findings, we need to go back. Um, so two research questions were asked. Um, we were looking at uh, basically comparing the proportion of people um, in, the, in the data set that were cited or received warnings um, compared to the people in Yellow Springs um, as estimated by the American um, Community Survey uh, from their uh, 2011 to 2015 five-year estimates. Um, so if you'll look at my little JSTF extended data analysis summary here, um, page two, uh, basically it, it shows that um, there, wa there was, a, you know, for example, approximately uh, 49, um, 497 um, black people, according to the American Community Survey, in Yellow Springs, and of those, um, 65 or 13 uh, percent received at least one citation, um, as opposed to um, there being about 3,027 um, white people in Yellow Springs, and of those 285 received at least one citation, um, which is you know about nine point, about nine and a half percent, um, and um, so basically using um, the chi square test. Um, bottomly concluded that the likelihood that that difference is due purely to chance is um, about 1.24. Um, in this study, uh, because it was exploratory, um, any p-value below 5% was considered statistically significant, um, which just means that uh, basically he found that there was a statistical relationship between um, race and getting at least one citation. D do you guys have any, have any questions at this point? 
Okay. And then. I mean, and I'll just say as a council member that I don't need digging in deep, just sort of the general. Okay. You know, like a few more minutes. Oh, a few more minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then we, we also were looking at, um, on average, um, <clears throat> Among Yellow Springs residents that received at least one citation, um, what was the average number of uh, citations that they received for each demographic group? Um, so that's instead of looking at the whole population and comparing it to the, to the American Community Survey, you're looking just at the people who received at least one citation um, and asking on average, because people often receive more than one, on average, whether certain groups that were cited were receiving. Um, more citations on average than other groups. Um, does that make sense? Is like that's a separate question because you're looking at separate populations. And, okay, so yeah, y'all are good on that. You're the fastest students of this. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and the data set that we were using was um, from the police. Um, uh, the race and, I'm sorry, the age and um, sex uh, data was basically from the person's license usually and was um, pretty much always available. Um, as opposed to the race data, uh, which was um, basically on the officer's determination and was um, pretty often um, unavailable. Um, and I could get into more details about that and how I used information where if you had the person in the data set multiple times and sometimes the race was missing and sometimes it was there, we were able to sort of fill in some of the blanks there, but we don't need to get into the details, I guess. Um, so, findings. Um, basically, the study found that uh, for citations, um, black residents, younger residents, and men were more likely to have received at least one citation um, than women, older residents, and um, white residents uh, as per their proportion of the, of the population. Um, uh, in terms of the average number <coughs> of uh, citations received, um, the study found no, no uh, Basically, the difference was not statistically significant for race, and then it was for age and for sex. Um, for the warning data, because we've ran the same test, but for warning, um, there was no, rela <coughs> no relationship for uh, race or sex in terms of comparing their proportion in the, in the census data, in terms of like, whether they were more or less likely to receive at least one, one warning. <clears throat> um, and like lots and lots of people receive at least one warning. It's really high percentages for everyone. Um, and, but uh, when you're looking at the average number of, of warnings received, um, there was an interaction between race, age, and sex in which, um, sorry, I should actually reference the report on this, which I hope I brought up here with me. Yeah, but I, I want the precise age groups here. It's 25 to 34 and 45 to 59. Yes, the 25 to 34 year old black men and 45 to 59 year old black men um, receive significantly more um, warnings on average than um, everyone else. Um, <clears throat> uh, actually by, by a pretty significant Amount, as, as I recall, the, the um, I think it was the 45 to 59 year old black men were actually receiving on average, um, and of course, it's, you know, you're cutting the data pretty tightly there, so it's a pretty small number of people, <laughs> but they received on average, I believe, more than three warnings each, um, and so I guess that's a pretty good review of the findings there. If you, if you want any other numbers to like help you understand the strength of the differences, or do you have any, any questions, General? Or do we want to open up to the community to, yeah. for a Q&A? Will you have some other people? Are you going to, yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, all I'm going to say is, um, yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Beth Crandall. Um, I think um, really what I'm here to do is answer your questions give an overview if that's helpful. So if I were to summarize this, this is um, in social science research, really a pretty simple design. There are four measures. Of those four measures, two of them show some kind of effect of race that's focused on members of our black community. Um, many of the three to four of the measures show an effect of age. So that's just kind of a big picture. Now, as Pat said, you can't say that this sort of analysis does not allow you to say why any of this has happened. It tells you that there's a relationship. And it's really up to you as council and us as community members to take hold of these findings and talk about what they mean and what we might want to do about them. And I believe, this is a personal opinion, that that discussion to be really productive needs to involve community members, council members, and the police. All, you know, those three entities need to come together in some conversation and discourse. And I think that would include, what are our next questions? What else do we want to know? So that's, that's sort of my so, big question. So I do have a question, Beth. Yes. So um, do you think that the data and the analysis that's been done so far is enough to move to the step you're uh, uh, suggesting, in other words, bringing community village government and the police together? Or do you think that some either some additional data needs to be obtained or that it needs to be refined more? I think given the nature of our community, and this is a public meeting, and probably some of this information is going to end up in the Yellow Springs News, that conversation is going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's going to happen. We need to be ready to engage it. And I think it's really important that it involve members of our police department so that they're not sort of off to the side being talked about instead of being part of the discourse and the discussion. So that's one thing. I have been to, um, I've been working on this with John since last summer. Uh, so I wasn't involved at the very beginning. I've been to a couple of the task force meetings. Um, this analysis and the report that came to us from Wright State generated a lot of questions, uh, some amount of confusion, which I think is kind of natural if you're not used to stats, um, and, and a lot of questions that could be next questions. Uh, one of the things Pat and John and I have talked about is whether a next step could be kind of gathering all those questions together, going back to the task force, with a, put them out on the table, and ask the task force to sort through them and decide what the next good question is or what the priorities might be for additional um, additional data collection, additional analysis. So can, th that's what I can I, I'd like to ask a question of um, given the fact that this that this that this information is it's not that old. I mean 2010 to 2016 isn't that long ago. No, it's not. But there has been a significant change um, in in the in police the department, in the personnel in the police department. Given um, the resources of the village and given the fact that we really are, there is obviously serious intent from 
this council and I believe from the new council members also from the police department and from the rest of the staff to move forward on reforms and on um, improving police and citizen relations sure. do you do you think that 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 this data piece that this research piece really is important I mean I feel like we're parsing yeah. this data and and I'm like what you know, why are we spending the human and the financial resources? I realize it was only two hundred dollars, it's not a lot of money. But is it going to really get us anything that is worth exploring at this point? Should we set two thousand seventeen as a new data point, as a new time frame and move forward, come up with the data, the answers, the questions we want answered, and then move forward rather than try to deal with this old date old data? I think that's a great question. Um, it's one that we've talked about. John did an analysis uh, that he can describe because I'm not sure what he did, but it involved looking over time, over those years, to see whether some of these uh, relationships um, held, even depending on who was on the police force. So? Yes. Um, so, uh if you look at, basically these questions were raised by task force members, um, um, including, um, <coughs> including Al Schluter, but not only Al Schluter. Um, but I included it in my re response to Al Schluter's report on racial bias in Yellow Springs um, uh, police citations. Uh, so if you look at page um, two and three of that report, it provides um, some supplemental descriptive statistics. Um, so page three does just breaks it down by year. I'm sure if we talked to a statistician, we could do probably something more sophisticated over time, uh, because obviously the, sense, the sample sizes get a little bit smaller over year uh, over the years. But um, pretty much, I think that overall you can say that um, in 2010 and, and uh, 2011, the um, basically are the are the only years in which the racial disparity is actually smaller than than the racial disparity averaged altogether basically those two years are are, um, are bringing the racial disparity down so actually if you looked at more recent data that is um, and excluded older data uh, at least you know up to 2016 up through 2016 um, the disparity would be larger um, similarly uh, if you um, look at page two. Um, so the bottom line for them. What's the bottom line? The bottom line. The bottom line answer to Karen's question. The bottom line answer to Karen's question. I mean, my view is that, um, you know, institutions don't change, like the police department aren't, police departments aren't known to, like, shift radically over a short period of time. So I expect that, luckily, um, data, data analysis over a period of time in which Luckily, the sample size will also be large enough to actually do meaningful analysis. Um, would would still be meaningful. Uh, also, the task force itself um, ha has these same concerns about um, recency and turnover. And so, I feel like um, to respond to those concerns fully, it would make sense to do some statistical analysis along at least those dimensions, um, if not, you know, more. The other answer I'd say to the why bother looking at the history, because now is now, let's go forward. Um, I share that, I think, looking at policing data over time going forward could be really important. But I also think that this analysis offers some empirical support for the anecdotal evidence from members of our black community that they feel singled out, particularly younger folks and maybe males, feel singled out by the police. And you can look at that and dismiss it and say, okay, well that was then, we're gonna go forward. But there's some empirical evidence here that supports those reports. And I think we need to pay attention to that. Yes. Think about it and do something with it. 
Yes, and, and I would agree. And I, I think it's also important to get those particular stories from people that have had these interactions um, to get sort of a deeper understanding of, of what's happening in, in the police interaction rather than just these top line numbers. Um, but I feel like the usefulness of statistical analysis is you're able to say, well, this isn't just anecdotal information. Um, we're actually seeing a, a statistically significant disparity here. Absolutely. And uh, Al has been sitting there with his hand raised. So oh, sorry, like, yeah. Al. <coughs> That's the problem with sitting in the back. <coughs> Okay. Well, I just want to um, point out the obvious that this is pretty complicated. And I also <coughs> want to share that we're not alone. Um, last week I met with the Dayton uh, Community Police Council. Um, I was there with Bill Randolph, Pastor Randolph, and uh, they shared their biggest challenge is working with data and the biggest challenge of the challenge is how to communicate with the public and with council. And uh, you saw that you've got your big pile of things that yeah. we gave you and I'm sure you all stayed up reading it. <laughs> so, and um, places was, that have been riveting. at this, <laughs> right. some of the places that have been at this for a long time actually um, put information online. In other words, it's web reporting. So, because this is all connected, as I said, I started to say, to transparency, so that citizens see. And I know you get a monthly report, right? I mean, the, you always get a monthly report, and we have our reports in the newspaper. But that's a point in time, and this really does show us what's happened over three police chiefs. This is, I think, three, three police Could chiefs. Be, uh that this is consistent, there's an issue here, there's a concern over three police chiefs and we need to look at it and we need to think about it. Um, again, we don't know the whole story and we have to keep saying that this is very exploratory. We don't know what people were stopped for. I mean, we don't know which officers, were there some officers who were more likely to stop people? There's so much we don't know, it's not the whole story. But it is a concern and it's something that we have to pay attention to and keep going with. Al? I, I just wanted to, uh, Al Schleter, I'm on the um, Justice System Task Force, I wanted to respond to what Karen uh, said. My concern was that we get some data, uh, and I just talked to the Chief, I had e emailed him asking him if I could get the data from 2017 so I could compare uh, the, the, uh, the, the statistics for that year with the past years. and. Uh, we were, he, had, he apparently didn't get it for some reason, so I'm gonna, I told him I was going to see him so I can get those data. I think that's very important. I was very, very, not very happy with the report that you've gotten and some of the, the circumstances that, that led to that. And so I did some analysis myself trying to get a better understanding of what was going on. And I looked at each individual police officer and the percent of uh, tickets range from 35 percent to African Americans to zero depending on which officer so there's a great disparity and and some of that needs to be looked at so we understand what's happening just quoting these figures 1.39 uh, racial disparity doesn't say anything unless we do a little more in-depth study and that's what I tried to do in mine and I would like to continue just in the direction you suggested Ryan, it seem like. Uh, let's hear from Dave. Yeah. It's Still David Turner. Um, thanks to John and Beth, you guys worked really hard and you know, put together a lot of information. Um, in doing statistical process control analysis of a manufacturing process, you're measuring all kinds of things, or very few things. And all it tells you is what's going on. You know, it tells you what the biggest and smallest cornflakes are you getting out of the cornflake machine. You can be getting burned giant cornflakes, and, and if you don't change the process, you keep getting burned giant cornflakes. So just doing the analysis is useful, but or doing the analysis is useful, but you have to do more than that. This can be, I think, used as a jumping off point to consider the processes that exist and how to change them to get different outcomes, which is which is what we want. This is a, a piece of information to guide us to do that, and it might be useful to, to do more data collection, but as many people have said, the past, you know, 
is a push, but what we need to do is make changes in the kind of information we're going to collect if we're going to collect it to get a better picture of it, to get you know better data. Uh, and also it can be used with things like implicit bias trading and all the other things you know, that we're considering to put that together as a package. Thanks, Dave. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, I mean, uh, sort of echoing what Karen said, I mean, to me, uh, this trend analysis, I think, is, is what's in, you know, interesting. It seems to me that doing the chi-square test and that kind of thing is, is something that we can do. And I remember way back when, Melissa even mentioned that, I mean, she's got enough basic statistics to kind of continue to run these numbers. I also think uh, the qualitative piece is interesting to me, and I think you've, you've raised some of those aspects. But, uh, but I like what Dave said, because to me, it is, you know, that now that we've identified and, and kind of created a benchmark, um, I like the idea of continuing to look at the, at the results and, and seeing what's happened and having that be part of the change that, that we're working on. So I appreciate that we started with this. Um, and I know, John, you've mentioned way back when the idea that we need to have, um, we need to report what's going on in, you know, in a data kind of way. Um, but, you know, I know enough about basic statistics to know that we don't have to get too complicated. I mean, Beth, you said yourself, I mean, this, this is pretty basic, the factors that we're looking at. Um, so I'd like to see that continue. But I do think what's most relevant is when Chief Carlson started, and then you know I'd like to see what's going on in the department now and moving forward, or you know a year ago and moving forward. So, um, so I thank uh, the committee for the work, and um, I think this is a good starting point. I mean, I'd like to say that um, I think uh, Beth's idea of you know citizens, council members, and the police department be meeting to discuss these. I don't, I mean, we want to, we don't want to, well, we've looked to the past and what we've discovered is important. It is particularly important to some parts of our community and we should not in any way discount the importance of it because of how important it is to particularly younger black men in the community but, but black citizens. Um, and so I think moving forward by having that kind of conversation could be, would be very good. And so I would ask, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I know you said going back to the committee and saying what questions should we ask or how should we go forward, but you guys have been working at it and you've been thinking about it and I would ask you, and I think Chief might have input here as well, what is the next step? How do we go forward? And uh, what, then one of the questions too is how do we continue to gather data into the future. Um, but I, this idea of now having this conversation, including our police department, I do think it's very important. I'm really glad our chief is so committed uh, and not afraid to address these issues and, uh, and you know, has, every, has a real commitment there. So, uh, so, but I would ask you three to come back to the committee with recommendations rather than uh, asking the committee you know, we're, you know, I think it'll be better if you come with some ideas and then we can add in. Um, that's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think that, I think that this is a, a great starting point and, and I don't have, I'm not surprised, I, I don't have a problem saying or believing that there was some racial bias and I think if we just use that as the jumping off point for moving forward, um, I mean, when I see a report that has you know, we spent $200 for it, but it has piles and piles of <laughs> initial reports, clarifications, <laughs> letters, you know, I mean, responses. I really meant this. It really means this. I mean, I, I, I sorry, John, but I almost feel like this, other than, than basic, you know, maybe having the, this basic answer that yes, there was bias. I don't know that there is data here. I, I wouldn't want to see resources, financial resources spent to further investigate this particular data point, this particular information. I think we need to, to use that data. If we can use it comparatively moving forward, use it, but I think we just need to look at moving forward, getting the data that's gonna be important and, and doing it collaboratively. Um, but I, you know, I, I, you know, I, 
You know, and especially when you've got when you've got the guy who did the research basically say, I didn't know that this was what I was doing, and and you know, I really didn't understand the job I was doing. Uh, well, I, I don't I don't think that's quite fair. Um, so well, just it's, to. Just to clarify um, on the the uh, the point of the, the the many clarifications and unfortunate corrections, um, I, I feel like that was just part of the learning process for the data analysis project. This is our our first analysis, and um, basically the uh, mostly the, the consultant made a number of errors that were later detected as I as I checked the descriptive statistics. But in the future, yeah. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 my bottom line. Um, and uh, basically in the future, I will just make sure to check all of the descriptive statistics before sharing the, the analysis with anyone. And I think that that would solve a majority of the problem. The, the other, the error that I made, obviously, I learned uh, was due to a miscommunication between me and, me and the department. Um, but, you know, it was very, very minor. Um, and once, once again, I think that he was just concerned that... Um, People would think that this was sort of a not an exploratory study, and he was just trying to underline that, or that, or that um, somehow causality could be inferred from this study. But I think that in fact, uh, our summaries were, were very clear that we we recognized that it was an exploratory study, and also that causality could not be um, inferred from from the statistics. I want to say a particular thanks. These guys put in a heck of a lot of work on a really complicated issue. We paid 200 and some dollars for all of this, you understand. That's because all these guys did a ton of, of volunteer work. Um, and another thing, though, I do want to say in terms of where statistics could help us, I have mentioned it to Al before, is you know our efforts to use our mayor's court more effectively. I mean, one thing we could start to use our stats for is looking at where our uh, you know, citations are being sent, and that would be a way to start to have more, you know, uh, to kind of see what's going on with that and maybe have some ideas of making sure our mayor's court's used more effectively. So, thank you. Okay, I got something to say. <clears throat> you know, what some of us have found out about this, these this, this statistics and data and so forth, the black community has known about this for years. Okay. Uh, we really don't need the discussion on the validity of the data, what groups were included, what groups were not included. We know the issues. As a community, as we continue to talk about the issues, a lot of those of us that were probably affected and involved, or involved have either passed away or they've moved away from the community. So the statistics may help those that are here but we got the, the statistics, we've got the data. Uh, to me, what we need to do is start setting down and talking about as a group of individuals within the community, not white versus black versus mixed versus other. We know that, okay? We, we know that as time moves forward, people move forward. But we need to start, and, and it's not only with how many times I get a warning or, or how many times that I look in my rear view mirror and a white car with a little light on the top may be following me or as I'm walking home from a basketball game late at night with my hoodie up, a light's not shining across my back where you're going and so forth. We need to start having these discussions as to we, we can't fix the problem across the nation 
but if we see issues with our own little community, how do we start working on those with the common goal of everybody is accepted for their strengths, weaknesses, and faults. And we decided to, to move here because we did have some things in common and we want to see things uh, get better. But <laughs> you, you guys can look at the, the data, the facts, and so forth. Within the black community, we've been trying to, we've been talking, we've been working with our youth to not, not try to change them, but just to identify what may be out there as they go through their 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 day to day and and it's, and it's more of not f putting fear in the minds of our youth but putting awareness in the minds of our youth and then trying to train them as to within the society that we live in there are certain things that are acceptable and certain things that are unacceptable. And, and, and that's what we, we strive for. And, and I think what the community should be striving for is we can't solve all, all the problems, but how can we make things just a little bit better and take some of that, that doubt and hap apprehension out of the African American community? so we can feel more like citizens of the community and not always having to look over our shoulder. So. Well said. So are we, good discussion. Um, are we ready to kind of wrap this one up? I mean, does the, is there a next step? I guess that'll just be something that you guys all talk about maybe at your retreat or at the, at the next council meeting. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is revolving loan fund follow-up. Um, Brian, I'll let you start this one. Actually, I think this is Chris. Is that right? Well, yes. I mean, it's going to be very short. In order to do this, we need to establish the CIC, and um, then we can look at how we can administer that and, and explore the possibility establish of what? partnering with the credit union. A CIC. Community, community Investment Corporation. Um, and it, it, that's what community resources was. Well, no, because they were, were non-designated. Right. Yeah. Can and we, and that's also been disbanded, I believe. It has. Can we can we use Green County CIC? Can we use a another governmental organization? The, the reason why I would encourage you to do one for the the village alone is that because you can use it as a tool for other things. Um, you are a, a creative group of, of a creative community uh, and want to um, be available for a number of different, as a resource. Um, and so I think that by having an existing structure in place, it allows some flexibility. But for the purposes of the, re the revolving loan fund, the, the methodology that municipalities use through the CIC. Hmm. And part of the reason I like the idea of it being a village Entity. That's what it would be, right? Well, yeah, well, no. well, it's a separate corporation, yeah. but it would yeah. be. It, for, the, for example, I would imagine that for purposes of the revolving loan fund, st staff would be on the board. Um, probably. Well, most. well, yeah. What my? Yeah. I just wanted. To, uh, the reason I like that structure is because there's more transparency with it. Uh, that it's you know a quasi-public entity, and it. Well, I, I will say I was on the founding board of Community Resources and there was a lot of discussion at the time about not having a designated CIC and there, was, there were a lot of concerns about it. So um, I'd, wanna, I'd want for us to spend some time thinking about this and, and I'm not clear why for the 
unless we significantly increase the funds, maybe we will, uh, uh, that, that we establish a whole another quasi-governmental organization to distribute $35,000 uh, in, in uh, revolving loan funds. So I, I, it's late. This isn't something right. to talk about, but th it's, this it's is a, it's something. It's compl a more complicated discussion. And, and there's also another issue re related to transparency. I think, you know, Judith's concern with transparency is more about, um, you know, what potentially what kind of business entities are, are, you know, we're attracting into the village and that kind of thing. But But the other piece of the transparency is that we're also dealing with people's private financial information. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's a point at which there could be some concern okay. about no, I, well, I understand. about transparency. Oh, I see. So you're saying that because because this is about the loans. These are these are about small but aren't loans. Those under executive session or something? No, no, okay. that's I mean, so. Well, part of the reason we you know were interested in you know the the donated services of the credit union was that they could handle that financial piece and have that separation. I think what Chris is saying is. To facilitate the, the credit union being involved, this designated CIC is something that we should look at. Um, but I also agree, um, and there was some research that we saw way back when about designated CICs that we can bring back and look at. Um, I mean, it gives us, if we want, I mean, we could have as much oversight. I mean, typically a designated CIC involves some of the elected officials being, you know, a part of that board. So. I have a question, Chris. I, I mean, if the way this converse, the conversation in the um, Economic Sustainability Commission has been going around this small amount of money, this small pot of money, about thirty-five thousand dollars, has been that they will be very small loans or grants. Um, well, no loans. That they will be very small loans. That um, they could actually potentially be. Um, of a higher risk nature, um, really for people who are, are, you know, kind of have n a new enterprise, things that, that normally most revolving loan funds simply do not fund. Retail, they don't fund retail. Restaurant, they don't fund restaurant. There are so many things that people in this community want to do from an economic development standpoint that don't fall under most revolving loan funds. Could that money be set aside simply as grant funding without going through a CIC, simply as grant funding so that so that this these or or or, or loans, unsecured loans or something. I mean because of the fact that they're loans, I assume and there is some payback requirement, I assume that that's different than I, doing a grant. My answer is off the top of my head. I would be uncomfortable with a grant project where the village is giving away its money to private citizens without an expectation of return. Okay. Uh, um, I, I want to just interject. I think this kind of discussion that's happening right now should be happy. We should have some people appointed, whether it should be at your at the commission level or whatever. I mean, I, I'd like to have, it's 10 after 10. Yes. And okay. I would have liked to have seen this already have been discussed and the pros and cons of having a CIC and it sounds like there hasn't been quite enough communication between the commission and Chris, frankly. I, I would say that's true. Yes. I was going to say, I, I think this is an important discussion, but it, it seems too late to really get into it. So can we I'll put it on a new okay. agenda okay. item in January maybe? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we'll do a brief follow-up on the designated smoking areas and signage um, <clears throat> council. I guess that you didn't see the signage. I think that Judy it wasn't in the yeah. packet. It was in the electronic yeah. packet. Judy's going to pull that up for okay. us right now. And Patty has a list of the um, areas where we're talking, the public areas, um, and how they'll be treated. Yes, and we'll have five designated smoking, uh, five properties where there will be a designated smoking area. And that will be the four parks, Gaunt, Ellis, Beatty Hughes, and Bill Duncan. And then there will be one here at the John Bryan Community Center. The rest of our uh, properties, and I will note that uh, the train station is not on there. Uh, but the train station will not have a designated smoking area. Because by the time you get far enough away from the trail and that, you end up on the public sidewalk anyway. Mm. Um, so it will not have a designated smoking area. So it will be the five that I mentioned, the four parks and the John Bryan Community Center, 
You can see the locations or the approximate locations of those on the maps. Melissa was kind enough to help me with that. Um, and the red circles uh, indicate where the, uh, approximately where the designated smoking areas will be in each of these properties. And then Judy is pulling up here in a minute the sample <laughs> of the, um, the door hanger as well as the, uh, or the uh, information card as well as the uh, signage for the uh, smoke-free areas. There's the um, information card. Uh, it will be double-sided um, with the logo or the graphic on the one side, the information on the other side. And then um, the signs will look similar to those, but um, we'll note on them, and you'll see it here, uh, the ordinance that they're expected to comply with add the uh, website where they can get some help if they want to stop smoking. Um, so this, this, and then I also included a uh, sample picture of the ash bins that we're trying to get um, that will go in each of the uh, smoking areas. Um, so they have a little uh, plate up there at the top where you can put your cigarette out, mm -hmm. drop the butt in, and then the uh, the top lifts off and you can empty the receptacle at the bottom. Um, so uh, if, if council is okay with this, then we'll proceed with ordering the signs. Uh, Johnny will get the signs that um, note the designated smoking areas. The um, Green County Combined Health District will provide these signs, um, the smoke-free signs under a grant, and we will get those up as soon as they get in because this legislation does go into effect the first of the year. How big will the smoke-free signs be? Um, they're just your basic, and like, no parking or stop signs. Yeah, probably, or speed, speed limit signs. Yeah, they're kind of, not. Yeah. Like yeah. at the entrance to each property? I they, will be, they, they will be kind of scattered around. We've mm -hmm. got multiple ones for each of the properties. We're going to ask for multiple ones for each of the uh -huh. properties. And, and I do want to point out that we're calling this tobacco-free, not just smoke-free. So right. that's going to include smokeless tobacco, e-cigarettes. That's correct. And... Um, Although I guess I mean are is is are e cigarettes can because that's not really tobacco, is it? it it's it's tobacco free. So if it's not considered tobacco then it would not fall okay. under that. But um but um two um right. does does fall under that. Any anything that is tobacco based. How is the uh the spot chosen for the Bryan Center? Uh, well, Johnny and I drove around and looked at each of these and we discussed where would be logical to get them far enough away from the entrances because we have so many multiple entrances to the Bryan Center. Um, because there's the entrance right, there's not only the entrance at the, the main area, but there are two entrances into the gym on the side there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we just decided that we would move it over there by the picnic tables to get the people kind of out of the, uh, away from the building as well as under the trees, which is a little bit of shelter. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's right there in front of the I know, basketball I mean, courts and the skate, the skate park. Why I can't agree. we have it back here? Um, I, I guess we could, but then you're putting it over there by the, the play area and the... Um, no. I think he's talking about back behind, in this area back behind the, pot, the, the garage. The, the, the kids pot. play back there all the time. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they literally play outside my window all the time, so they run back and forth back there. I'm not talking about... Well, I'm they, talking about right here. They run back and forth. I mean, it, I can. We can talk about moving it. I mean, it's just there's really no really good place for it on the Bryan Center. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I'd, I'd suggest we rethink the Bryan Center spot. I just think that's very visible. It's also mm -hmm. vis visible from the the trail. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't have it at the price. That's what I think. But. Well, the problem with not having it, having one here is, number one, we yeah. do have employees who smoke. Yeah. Number two, we do rent this building out quite a bit, and people come in and rent it, and um, some of them would like to have a designated smoking area. How about if we put them in the middle, in the, in the tree forest? <laughs> Nobody will see them, and they'll be sheltered. The pine trees out front. Mm. 
I like the signs, and I think the, it the looks kids, great the, to me. The kids climb the. I know. Trees. I know. I'm there's sorry, no. There's no. Place. I say I really like the signs, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're great. I'm glad yeah. that we're doing this. And there's no place we're going to escape children here. I'm afraid. Yeah. Because they do run yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Don't they, Judy? No. <laughs> Sometimes they <do. laughs> I mean, we, we did discuss putting it um, like kind of over here on this end and back a little bit out of the way, but then you get next to the windows of, of the offices that staff opens in the summertime and the smoke would smoke, would, you know, flow mm -hmm. in there. So. I also wonder about the water spigot at Bill Duncan, just because the gardeners are using that on a pretty regular basis, I assume, aren't they? Um, you know, it really doesn't get used a, hu a huge amount, um, and, and there's rarely anybody down by the picnic tables at Bill Duncan. I'm not necessarily complaining. I mean, I'm not, actually, I'm not complaining about the Yellow Springs Station, but I can tell you it is going to cause a lot of consternation. But to, to we'll not figure have it out, to not have because it's always been a, well, so have all these other places, mm -hmm. places so I'm not gonna worry about. It. Okay, looks good. Um, no new business, manager's report. Uh, let me scroll down to that. Um, just that the crew quarters is, they're in the permitting stage with Green County and as soon as we get approval, we'll break around on that. Um, we have a new special events policy uh, in place here uh, for all village events. And the most important thing that folks need to remember about that is if you want to have an event, it is very, very, very important that you start the process uh, well ahead of time because there is a deadline for the event application that's 30 days prior to the event. And you need to start with Samantha Stewart down in the Youth Center. Um, and then she will, um, she will make sure that the event gets forwarded to the appropriate person. Um, we're still working on the uh, small cell tower legislation. There, as Chris indicated, maybe some changes coming in th as far as that. And um, from the village staff, we would like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Okay. Will you put the new event policy in the packet? Of, um, yeah. The next? Mm -hmm. And um, I, j I also wanted to point out that um, uh, Denise Swinger had a, an excellent report on planning. Um, she does a very detailed report, and she's obviously a very busy person, and mm -hmm. some good stuff has been happening mm -hmm. um, on planning commission. Uh, Chief, oh no, sorry, Melissa? No, I didn't put a report in because it's just business as usual, nothing major. Chief? I just got one thing to announce. Uh, I told you about the testing that we had Saturday for nine applicants. We also have hired a part-time dispatcher, uh, Shane Reed. So if you see a young man with a beard down in the dispatch area, please say hello and introduce yourself. It's great that there were so many applicants. That's, that's amazing. We, well, we were hoping for more, but I agree. Oh, I thought nine was a lot. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to note, too, I did put the new holiday schedule in the packets. I forgot to mention that in my report because it was a separate document. So the 2018 holiday schedule is in there. Okay. Uh, Judy? Uh, it's been super busy. Tons of public records requests. I'm going to say this really fast because I held off, but I would like to express my best wishes to Jerry and Karen. I believe I have a unique position to see how in demanding the role of public servant can be. Jerry and Karen have given of themselves, Jerry, for six years, Karen for 12. And I have a huge amount of respect for what this has meant to them in terms of devotion to the community and their ability to constantly respond to criticism and challenge and to keep the good of the village in view at all times. And Karen, I'll particularly miss you as a mentor to me over the years. You've been present and supportive during many challenging times for me personally, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Jerry, Planning Commission. Uh, the, Denise did an excellent job. And reporting and 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 one uh, new uh, it's it's a expansion of a business, but for clarification purposes, uh, what we approved uh, out on uh, Zinia Avenue for the for the brewery was a special events uh, facility, which uh, we really don't have. Uh, I want here in the community. And as you can see the, from the two pictures, uh, our artist uh, renditions of what the new uh, facility is going to look like. Uh, 
we're kind of excited for uh, some upgrades we'll be seeing at the south end of town. Great, thanks. Um, Brian? Uh, yeah, I'll just reiterate the uh, opening of a reopening of the Brian Community Center Gallery on January 19th from 6 to 9. And um, I also wanted to uh, give a shout out. The Arts and Culture Commission um, judged the uh, downtown shop windows. And uh, first place went to House of Ravenwood. Second place went to Mills Park Hotel. And third place went to Glen Garden Gifts. So we appreciate all the folks that decorated. And um, for the Economic Sustainability Commission, we did not have a meeting this month. So uh, we're just going to be starting with new stuff. Uh, in the new year. Judith. Um, the Library Commission, I, I, well, I was not there, but um, there, we're now going to quarterly meetings. Uh, Joe Carr and Dorothy Smith, who are new members, um, new new members, um, you know, were introduced and orientated to the works of the, of the, of the committee. Um, I know there was discussion about the restroom renovation. Uh, the food forest brochure that Lee Duncan has done um, is complete. And when you go into the library, you might find it on one of the counters. Um, and there's evidently still drainage issues north of the library and some handrail issues that need to be, need attention. Um, the energy board, Wendy Van Buren, came to our last meeting. Um, I really would like to bring a, a, uh, uh, a goal for the coming year about tree planting. Um, she told us that properly placed trees will reduce by 20% the energy use of, of buildings. Um, the loss, loss of ash trees in the village uh, means, I mean, she really feels like there is space uh, for more trees here in the village, but there's that particular focus the energy board's thinking about, which is, you know, uh, energy reduction from the shade of trees. And Justice System Task Force, the last meeting, well, we kind of finalized our citations and warnings uh, report to council. Pam Conide came and uh, described her transition into becoming our mayor. And um, I did want to point out we have, we have two open seats for the JSTF. And um, I noticed there's a seat on Planning Commission, an alternate. And I, I had kind of thought we should just wait till the new year to try to address these because uh, nobody's paying attention to our ads in the paper right now. I'm kind of uh, doubting. Um, I know we've gotten one interested person for the Planning Commission, which is great. And um, But I just wanted to suggest we just uh, restart in January with those. Anyway, I, I don't think that it makes sense for JSTF to try to adjust those openings at the moment, wait till the new people are in place. Okay. That was my suggestion. Marianne? Yeah. Um, the mediation program uh, recently celebrated, I think it was the 30, 30 years, so that was the most recent, and uh, the mediation program has been discussing the idea of restorative justice and I think wants to meet with the new mayor. Um, I did meet with the school liaison um, and, you know, the main thing that we talked about other than the housing needs assessment that the village is doing and the facilities planning that the schools are doing are the distinction between how the school board and village council works. And it was an interesting distinction, I think, because essentially council has more of a um, active, proactive, um, ex executive function really than the school board. The school board is more reactive and really takes suggestions from the administration and the um, superintendent. So that was a very interesting discussion to have. Um, the other uh, HRC did not meet last time. The Environmental Commission I did, was, did not attend. Um, and the Beaver Management Task Force has not met. So that's my report. Okay. Um, I don't really have much to report on my, uh, on my commission's Green County Regional Planning. I think I mentioned at the last meeting that, uh, that Ken LeBlanc is retiring. His position has been announced um, or has been advertised. So that will be a huge loss, but he really set um, the stage for, 
for getting Greene County Regional Planning back on track, um, back on budget, and um, moving into some more regional planning work as opposed to simply um, approving or, or looking at subdivisions. Um, MVRPC, um, nothing, we just did a little bit of update um, on our last. I just did notice that um, two priority projects from the state are two projects on Route 35. One is widening of 35 from uh, James 8, well it's from more from like around Smithville down to, um, down to 675. So that's one project and then the other is the interchange and the whole super street concept that's going to happen over in the Factory Valley Street area. Um, let's see, and we said there, there were qu actually quite a few of us leaving MVRPC. Carol Graff, who's the pre who was the board president and has actually served an elective office for 36 years in Greene County, uh -huh. is retiring. So that was, uh, that's pretty monumental. I, it's, I feel good going out with Carol. Um, one of the, she, she and I are like the only two, well, not the only two Democrats in, in, in Greene County, but a couple of the only two. <laughs> Um, and the chamber, um, we've had a busy year. We'll have our annual meeting um, February 15th. We're going to have a board retreat on January 12th and we're welcoming four new board members and saying goodbye to I think four or five. So um, it's been a good year. Um, okay, future agenda items. Who, who wants to, well, I guess, I mean, we'll know, we'll know what, uh, we know what's here. Anything that was, anything, anybody, you guys want to add to this? Well, um, it's not, we will be discussing the, okay, you, no, the JFTF, that police data report, I don't know if we'll be discussing it's it. Coming back, it? No. It's not coming back, is it? It's not coming back. Well, I mean, the, what we're going to do next. Oh, well, no, we won't have a meeting before then. Yeah. We won't have a, a task force meeting you, before oh. the next council meeting. On that topic. Oh. We're not going to have a meeting before January 2nd, girl. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, we're personally, not. I'm thinking the JSC. They're going to need a little time. The next step would be, you know, will be discussed, discussed at the retreat, I would assume. That will be something of how your guys are going to move. We're not having a retreat, but I'm not aware of it. Oh, the council. Gotcha. It might be a short meeting. No. Huh? We'll ease you guys in. Oh. Well, <laughs> we'll ease add you guys in. We'll be done by 8. <laughs> add the retreat agenda to January 2nd. Yes, that should be on there. Yeah. Good, good point. I see what you're saying. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm catching that. Um, okay. The Bowen presentation. Mm -hmm. So, I, at, the, at that first uh, retreat, uh, the first half day retreat, are we talking goals at all? Because if we are, we should put it on our agenda. No, well, that's what we're going to, we said we're going to talk what we'll about, talk about, about the agenda the at our council. Well, the reason I'm asking, though, is if it is something that is feasibly going to be a, 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 a discussion point no, at, at our, goal. at the uh, retreat, we should have a, a discussion with citizens on the on the second should we you normally put goals discussion? on you normally put goals on it's way too in your soon. first couple of meetings okay. it's, it's that's fine yeah who who is going to plan the agenda for january 2nd i i think what you usually do is let judy know topics and she takes care of that right well you've combined no, no, for the can, second meeting the, the oh, agenda planning be meeting really short. should probably just be brian as brian. vice president brian and patty yeah, yeah, Brian, Patty, and Judy, Judy and Judy. Melissa. Okay. You, Brian, Brian steps in yeah. until there's a vote. That that's how that works. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Motion. What? Last time. I know. Motion to adjourn. So move. All those in favor. Oh, second. Yeah, second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the agenda, it'll just be about <laughs> 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 so, if you're going to be